Good evening, hockey fans, and welcome to the Kingsville Arena Complex in Kingsville, Ontario, the site of Greater Metro Hockey League action. There is our game tonight, the Kamoka Dragons taking on the Kingsville Kings. The Kings have that one blemish mark on their record, and it came via this team, the Kamoka Dragons. Good evening, my name is Dominic Papa. Joining me in the broadcast booth, our color commentator, Coach Steve Pronger. Welcome to the uh, broadcast tonight, Steve. Let's take a look first at our starting goaltenders for the uh, game tonight. We'll start with the visitors, the Kamoka Dragons. There he is in the pipes. That is Craig Wood, number 34, a very respectable F, uh, record from London, Ontario. At the other end of the rink, no surprise there. And Peshek gets the call here tonight. And again, outstanding numbers for Pechik. The puck has been dropped. We are underway here at the Kingsville Arena. Another exciting game here on we-tv.ca. Glad to have you along for the ride. Right away, the Kings get it into the Kamoka zone. A quick shot from the point that comes off the stick of, I believe it was Kotick, and making the save was Wood. Steve, I think we got a great game on our hands here tonight. Sure, Dom, there if we look at Craig Wood and that the big defenseman was a championship goalie last year with the Tamaskaming Titans in the GMHL, and he comes uh, for a great veteran year uh, for Josh Billu in the pipes for the London, sorry, the Kamoka Dragons. Yeah, Josh Bolio, the uh, coach for the uh, Kamoka Dragons, comes here after a brief professional career at the pro level and brings a lot of good hockey knowledge uh, to the table for this Kamoka Dragons team. Nicholson for the Kings, turns it up ice over the center stripe over the blue line, Nicholson down the left side, looks in front, pulls up in the corner deep, a little chip pass out front, doesn't get anywhere. The Dragons take over. Here's Hartwick now. A quick shot that goes off a stick and that'll go over the glass. And we'll get a face off. I believe this is gonna come inside the Kingsville zone. As mentioned, Steve, uh, this Kamoka team is the only team to defeat the Kingsville Kings. I believe it was a two to one score. Uh, probably about two or three weeks ago. That's right, Dom, November 28th in Kamoka, and I spoke to Coach Billy before the game, and he told me, quite frankly, they won the game because they played solid defense and shut down the Kingsville Kings. Well, they will have to do that again here tonight. Kingsville has been scoring goals in bunches. Another quick whistle there. Last night, the Kings were on the road taking on Norfolk. Not pretty, I'll tell you what. 19-1, to 1, the Kings win that game. There you take a look at the big defenseman of the Kamoka Dragons. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah, Matthew Ross, uh, Dom, is an all-star defenseman. Again, played on the championship team, the Tamaskaming Titans last year, and comes to Kamoka, uh, six foot four, 230 pounds, and represented uh, the Kamoka Dragons at last week's NCAA showcase game in Port Colborne. Great size, I'll tell you what, he is a big man back there. The Dragons now trying to turn it up ice. Galuli hits his man, Burdov. Burdov gets the puck into the zone. Right away, it's sent back out. And Levesque takes over for the Dragons. Over to Emery. Emery to Galuli. He just touches it into the Kingsville zone. It doesn't get in deep. Comes right back to Ross. Ross is quick pass off the skate of number 43, Tyson Levesque. The Dragons in the midst of a wholesale line change. Here comes the Kings. A shoot in that goes off the blocker of Wood. Anton can't control the puck. Here's Maddie for the King. Going right to the net. Maddie right in front. Uh, took the lane and Wood had to be sharp there. Warner keeps it in at the point for the Kings. Gardeman, who had a five point night last night, can't get anywhere with that puck. Now Gardeman back checking, doing a good job taking his man off the puck. He was going stride for stride there with Hartwick. Here come the Kings taking advantage of a loose puck. Lokenix decides to recoup back to Borner. McDonough, McDonough, the cross ice dump in. On it, there was Bumpus for Kamoka. He gets the puck out. The Dragons trying to get it in. Both teams, it looks like, Steve, they want to do the dump and chase here, dump and chase. Yeah, and speaking of the dump and chase, Dom, I'd like to take a moment to, to mention the guys are going to pick up the pucks after some of those dumps and chase. Sure. Our refereeing staff, there we see uh, referee Dan Impoliti there. He's uh, joined by... Uh, Veteran Al Provo and dropping the pucks and patrolling the lines will be, of course, uh, regular here, Mike McGinnis. Yeah, that's our crew here tonight. Uh, we see these guys a lot. <coughs> McDonough circles behind his own net. He'll lead the rush. Quick pass up to Zilkanix. He gives chase now into the zone. Arnold there first for the Dragons. Arnold, Arnold eludes a check. Backhands one into the neutral zone, picking it up there. Number 88, that's McKelvey. McKelvey getting around. Kotick, and he makes a good shot there. Petrick, another good save. 
as the Dragons get their first couple of good shots at the Kingsville net. Kept in at the blue line by Ross, his long shot handled by Patrick. They're saying it came outside the blue line, so it's going to be an offside, but the first couple of good shots on net for Kamoka. Yeah, Don, we just saw our Kamoka player to watch, uh, Ross, stand up at the blue line. Stand up at the blue line, but here we have a look at Marcel Kotick, the Kingsville player to watch at tonight's game. Had six points last night against No Fork Dom, and uh, he comes to us from Prague, Czechoslovakia. Uh, I would put him in the stud category there, Steve. I really like the way he plays uh, the game back there. He's a good thinking defenseman. He's got good mobility, and uh, not surprised that uh, he puts up some pretty good numbers in this league. Hartwick. Trying to get through the defense, that's uh, Kotick and Havelka, and they collide right into Patrick. And we're gonna get a face-off, I believe, in the Kingsville zone. Yeah, again, we I was about to make a comment about Kotick, uh, good stand-up defenseman, our player to watch from Kingsville tonight. I love the way this young man is aggressive, Dom, and he starts playing defense outside of his own zone. And when you play defense outside of your own zone, you're creating turnover after turnover, and you're forcing the Kamoka Dragons to make decisions before they really want to. Face off to the blocker side of Jan Pacek, the Kingsville goalie, Kotick. Over to Havelka behind the net off the board. Simmons can't get a stick on it. Ross takes over for the Dragons. He just chips it back into the Kingsville zone. Havelka has time. He'll lead the rush. Havelka at the center stripe, dumps it in hard, giving chase as Maddie. Beating him to the puck there, though, is uh, number 25, that's Corbin Emery of the Dragons. Emery now takes over the puck. Emery looking for a little bit of room. Over to number 43, that's Levesque. He takes a hit right away. Simmons picks up the loose puck to Maddie. Maddie on the left swing, uh, on his off wing actually. Puck right out in front, Simmons can't get it through. No one able to control this puck. Finally, Simmons back ends one at the net and Wood makes the easy save. Tom, as I, as I mentioned before, there we see Craig Wood, a little skirmish around his crease with uh, big Matthew Ross right next to him there. Speaking to Coach Beaulieu before the game, he told me the key to success they had the last time against the Kingsville Kings was solid defense. In other words, they're going to protect Craig Wood, they're going to protect their net, and they're going to put a, a priority in playing defense first tonight. McKelvey wins the draw for the Dragons. Here's Zimmerman, one-on-one -on -one against Zakezi. Zimmerman off the boards, that shot comes right back out front, sending it back in deep as Enger. Kingsville now trying to grab control of this, they can't get it out though. Now the Kings do as it gets into the neutral zone. Zimmerman can't control, Burdov gets a stick on it up to Zokanix. He can't get anywhere with it, Arnold takes over, he trips him behind his own net. Niederbach now trying to help out, getting some control. Has Burdoff coming in late, couldn't get him the puck. Gardeman looks out front. Here's the pass. Volkanix can't th get the shot off. Good coverage there as they were all over the uh, Kingsville forward, right in front of the net there, Steve. Right. We look down at the, at the Kamoka bench there. Uh, you know, this team has, is going to create quite a challenge tonight, uh, Dom, for this Kingsville Kings hockey club. Uh, I know Bolio brings down his troops tonight. Are ready to go and believing they can beat this team again. And Dom, one of the, the interesting matchups I want to really watch tonight is Niederbach versus Matthew Ross. I want to see what kind of battle ensues around, in fact, Kamoka net. Two big, strong guys there, that's for sure, Steve. Uh, that will be an interesting battle all night long. From the faceoff, the Dragons can't get anywhere with it. Borner now, he loses it to Mapes. Mapes up to Hartwick, back to Mapes. He chops it into the Kingsville zone. McDonough. Quick wrap around the left side here. We got a penalty coming up to the Dragons. This is on delay and that the puck goes astray, but there is indeed a penalty behind the play. It's gonna go to the Kamoka Dragons, I believe. Mapes looks like the guilty party. And Kingsville will get the first power play. That's right, as we uh, see Mapes head his way to the penalty box, it's a good opportunity for the Kingsville Kings here at home, Dom, to set the pace and uh, send a message to uh, Kamoka right, right off the bat. We see Coach Estolos, uh, quick whistle there. He's got his big line out, Niederbach there. I just mentioned now we have Niederbach and, and Ross on the ice at the same time. Uh, I'm looking forward to that battle all night. We'll do it all again in the uh, glove side of Wood and Again, Kamoka controls the draw and immediately they send that puck down the length of the ice. Kingsville goes back to regroup, set up the breakout. Left side pass to Niederbach with the... 
Good step over the blue line. Niederbach pulls up deep in the corner. Now he'll go up to the half wall on the left side. Kotick back to Niederbach. Niederbach tries to get back to Kotick. Good job there by Ross to anticipate and uh, put pressure on that puck. Dom, that's what they have to do in this building. Uh, defensemen from Como have to move their feet and jump on loose pucks to take advantage of the limited size this rink has to offer. Antone intercepts that pass. He carries into the Kingsville zone. Now Antone, a quick shot. That goes wide of the net. Kingsville now will have some time and space. This will be Niederbach on the left side with some steam. Niederbach, quick shot saved by Wood. And right away, Ross gets a stick on it and flips it. That one hits actually up in the ceiling as that puck was up on edge. Dom, it's a tale of two games here. Kamoka has to take advantage and be aggressive in this small zone that Kingsville has to work with, but yet Kingsville has to find an opportunity to keep the puck moving and isolate a guy and isolate a guy so they can get a free shot on net. We'll see how that plays out on this power play. Here's Burdoff looking for some space. He'll send it to, I believe this is Nicholson. Nicholson takes a look. He's on the half wall on the right side. Nicholson. Showing some patience over to Burdoff. Burdoff moves to the middle of the zone to Nicholson. They're really trying to get Kamoka to move around, Steve, but they're not biting. The Dragons are doing nope. a good job showing good discipline. Yeah, Kamoka Dom seems to jump at the right time and hold their ground at the right time and really creates no room for Kingsville. Good job by Kamoka. Half a minute to go in the Kingsville power play. Dumped into the corner, Zekesi, Zekesi, I should say, follows up for Kingsville. Here's Burdoff. Burdoff finally gets a shot off. Pad save there by Wood and Hartwick right away again. Sends it down the length of the ice. Strong, strong presence in front of that Kamoka net. Octavec circles in his own zone for the Kings. Penalty about to expire. Here comes Octavec for the Kingsville squad. A weak shot that goes wide and Wood takes it off the back wall and covers up. Penalty has expired. 12.54 to go in period number one. We're still scoreless here at the Kingsville Arena. Dom, uh, Craig Wood made some great saves on that penalty kill, and as you know, as you know, uh, the, the goaltender has to be your best penalty killer, and uh, Kamoka dodged a bullet on that one, left Kingsville with nothing to show for it. Kamoka now from the faceoff. This is Galuli Over to Anton. Good save by Pashik as a nice breakout there by the Dragons right off the faceoff, and we get a little bit of uh, extracurricular activity after the whistle, but Pashik uh, tested very well there, and he came up with a really nice save. Yeah, Jan Pashik, uh, Dom, I just checked in the league website as we look at referee Provo having a little chit-chat with one of the Kamoka players. Jan Pashik has the most wins in the Greater Metro Hockey League, and rightfully so, and uh, he answered the call big on that, uh, really I call it the first big test of the game from Kamoka. Face off to the stick side of Pashik. Kamoka has been really good on the faceoffs already, Steve. I'll tell you what, they won that job. Clean, uh, that draw cleanly, and Fox uh, let a good shot go from the point. Dom, I suspect this uh, Kamoka team is well coached, as you just alluded to earlier, and uh, they're going to be. It's going to be quite the challenge for the Kingsville Kings to win this game tonight. And we have to note, Steve, and uh, I'm sure you can give a little more detail. Next whistle, you can tell us the, the Kamoka team is out without a couple of key players. We'll get into that in just a second. The next whistle. Bunch goes back. He gives up a bad pass to Maddie. Maddie, quick, quick shot. Saved there by Wood. The nets come off a little bit, so they play blown dead. But uh, Coach Beaulieu is without two key players tonight with Kamoka. That's right. I'm going to put it to you this way, Dom. Coach Beaulieu from Kamoka is without 49 goals in his lineup tonight. Wow. Uh, Shane O'Brien, who also represented uh, Kamoka at the NCAA Showcase, he's a scratch tonight. And it's the second leading scorer on the team, Ryan Watson, who's got 20 goals. Both those players out tonight for Kamoka. We have another penalty against Kamoka here, Steve. I didn't get uh, the call. I didn't see it. Uh, but Kingsville will go on their second power play of the game, second of the period. Obviously, they are zero for one. Roughing was the call against the Kings. Kotick, quick shot, saved by Wood. Gardeman takes the rebound back to Havelka. Kotick, he lets the drive go wide. Niederbach controls to Gardeman back to Havelka, Havelka to Gardeman, one-timer shot wide. Kotick keeps it in, though, off the wards. Dom, that bring a uh, big uh, Matthew Ross standing in front of the net. It's like having a second goalie there. Havelka over to Zolkanitz. 
His shot goes wide, but Kingsville controls. Havelka, Gardeman, back to Havelka. Havelka tries to drill one through, blocked. Kotick, another quick shot, right to Wood, and he covers up. Uh, there's, again, a lot of traffic in front of that net. And Ross right there taking care of business. 106 remaining on the Kingsville power play. 11.15 to go here in period one. Dom, it appears the Kingsville Kings are trying to use a strategy we call an overload. We're putting five guys on one half of the rink. The problem is you're putting four Kamoka Dragons with them, and there just doesn't appear to be any room <laughs> for Kingsville to see the net. Well, Kamoka's done a good job so far this period. And again, that pass right through the zone. Gardeman uh, was watched closely there and couldn't get the stick down. I should say that wasn't Gardeman, that was Nicholson. The Kamoka penalty killers are jumping on every loose puck, and right at this point, they're beating the Kings to those loose pucks. Yep. They're making good decisions, Steve, that's for sure. Nicholson looking for some space. He decides to wrap it around. Here's Bumpus. His pass doesn't make it through. Play goes behind the net. That's number 19. Brendan Fox a chopping at it. He can't get it out. Devin Dara now for the Kings to Octavec. And we got a battle in front of the net. We're going to get a call here. Bumpus. And Nicholson were going toe-to-toe -to -toe in front of the net. I'm not sure if we're going to get both of them here, Steve, or just one of them. Looks like Nicholson's the only player heading towards the box, so that'll nullify the remaining 22 seconds of the Kingsville power play. And Kamoka will go to their first power play in 22 seconds. Yeah, C.J. Nicholson taking matters into his own hands. Uh, Dom, I was saying very tight quarters around the Kamoka net, and it looks like Nicholson wanted to create some room. Inverted cross-check, the defender went down. We find ourselves four on four. For another 18 seconds, and then Kamoka goes to the power play. That pass goes astray. That'll be icing charged against Kingsville. The last game uh, for us, Steve, here tonight uh, before the holiday break. Uh, we won't be back here for a little while, uh, mid-January. We'll have more information on the broadcast as it goes on here, but... Uh, Certainly on behalf of everybody here at WeTV, we wish everyone the best of the holiday season and a very happy new year. Kingsville now will be shorthanded as Levesque steps back on the ice. He goes right into the play after Leach. Leach is passed to Matty. He goes, has to go backward. He'll send it back to Kotick. Kamoka in the midst of a line change here, trying to get some of their power play guys out. Uh, they still have a minute 20 remaining with the extra man. Bumpus, Hartwick takes the pass to Ross. Ross over to McKelvey. McKelvey down the right side, wraps it around the wall, looking for Antone. He's beat to the puck there by Kotick. Kotick will carry it now, and he'll just dump it in, killing off some of the uh, penalty here. Number three, Matthew Ross from London, Ontario. Sends it up ice. Here's McKelvey. He pulls up on the half wall. McKelvey sends it down behind the Kingsville net. Burdoff gets a stick on it. Ross will keep it in. One timer from the point. That goes wide. Behind the net. The Kamoka team comes up with it. This is Bumpus. His shot. That's blocked partially. It goes wide of the net. In the corner now. Hartwick can't control it. Kingsville is able to clear it down the length of the ice one more time. Just over 20 seconds remaining here in the Kamoka power play. 8.52 to go in period one. Still scoreless. Left side pass. Here's the shot. That's blocked there by Zakezi. Ross has to go back. Nicholson steps back on the ice. The Kings back to full strength. 8.25, counting down here in the first period. We're scoreless between the Dragons and the Kingsville Kings. Dominic Pop along with Steve Pronger bringing you all the action with the WeTV gang here from the Kingsville Arena. Arnold just chips it into the Kingsville zone. Burdoff. Sorrells takes a hit, and there's a high stick there. And we're going to get a penalty as... Not sure who was the player that took the high stick, but uh, Mapes is going to go to the box for high sticking. And Kingsville will go to their third power play of the period. You don't want to push this button too much, Steve. 
No, no. Uh, referee Provo was right there. He saw the high stick uh, to the Kingsville player. He called his, his arm went up immediately, Dom. And the Kingsville needs this opportunity right now. If we look at Mape sitting in the box. Kingsville, with their first line back on the ice, needs to convert on this power play and go out of this period with a one nothing lead. Robert Mapes, two minutes for high sticking third power play of the game for the Kings. They're zero for two right now. Niederbach behind the net. He'll switch over to the left side. He's being checked there by Emery. Back to the point. Havelka can't handle it. He has to go back to the neutral zone. McKelvey chopping at him. Play into the neutral zone. Niederbach comes up with it now. He'll leave it there for Zokanix. He can't get anywhere. McKelvey chops at it. And that puck out back into the neutral zone one more time. Gardeman will try his luck as he sends it over to Havelka, up to Niederbach. Kotick can't control that pass, and right away, Kamoka Dragons send it out again. Havelka right back for the Kings. Wood will set it up behind the net. Emery takes the hit, can't get anywhere with the puck. Ross comes in to help out for the Dragons. Gardeman back to the point to Havelka, to Kotick. Kotick, Gardeman, shot, scores! Nice passing play, Matthias Gardeman. His 24th of the season makes it one nothing Kingsville. Yeah, Dom, our player to watch, uh, Kotick there with a great cross-ice pass from his point position, uh, feeding Matthias Gardeman. And it was a similar goal that we saw the other night, uh, one of the Windsor Spitfires score. And what I mean by that is when that puck comes across ice, that goaltender's got to get across, and if it's a one-two tic-tac-toe and a one-timer shot, goaltenders often don't have a chance to get over in time. It's Matthias Gardeman putting the Kingsville Kings up one to nothing. Well, let's see how the Dragons respond to that. As Kingsville does take advantage of one of the power plays, finally. They are now one for three with the extra man. Galuli right into the Kingsville zone. Patrick sets it up there for McDonough. Donna's left side pass. Over to the right side, this is Dara. Bumpus goes into the corner. He's checked there by Nicholson. Galuli over to Antone. Antone now with some space. He'll wrap it around the wall. Coming in is Hartwick to try to pick up that loose puck. He takes a hit from Borner. Nicholson can't get anywhere with the loose puck, but Donna helps out. And Dara's pass goes astray all the way down into the Kamoka zone. This is Foxa. Left side pass for Hartwick. He can't control it. Burdoff takes over for the Kings. Daniel Burdoff. Up to Oktevik. Oktevik, a backhander. That goes wide of the net. Foxa can't control it. It goes into the corner. Now the Dragons will have some time to move it out. Burdick Bunch, I should say, will get the puck out. Foxa, he can't get anywhere with it, and they're calling it an offside. Referee Provo makes the call. Faceoff will come outside the Kamoka blue line. Matthias Gardeman with the uh, goal, getting the assist, number seven, Marcel Kotick, and also number four, Lucas Havelka. The goal comes at 13-14 of the period. A power play tally for the Kings, and that's where we stand, one nothing. Burdoff keeps it in at the point, a long shot. Matty was right there, he couldn't get his stick on it. Wood decides to cover up, take no chances. Yeah, Dom, we look at a routine save there by Craig Wood. Uh, you know, that one got by him, but really that's the lifeblood of the Kingsville Kings tonight. Their ability to score on the power play at home is what's gonna bury the Kamoka Dragons. And uh, they have to do a little better than one for three if they're gonna do that. Well, <laughs> I think the key there, Steve, for Kamoka is just to stay out of the box. Right. The referees are playing no uh, favorites uh, tonight with Kamoka. In fact, Kamoka realizing early if they raise the stick, they punch, they do something, they're going to find their way uh, to the penalty box. Uh, hopefully, they'll be a little more cautious as they go about the rest of this game. Face off to the glove side of Wood. McKelvey against Gardeman. Puck comes to the point. Battle there just inside the blue line. Now it goes into the neutral zone. Gardeman. Back for the Kings to Zokanix. 
Niederbach and Ross, a couple of big customers there colliding behind the net. Burdoff pinches in at the point to Zokanics. Zokanics being hounded by Emery. McKelvey comes in to help out for the Dragons. Puck to the point. Burdoff, quick shot, saved by Wood, steers it into the corner. Levesque now. He'll send it around to Emery. Emery will have some time and space to make a move here. His pass intercepted by Gardeman and kept in. Walking in, Zokanix. Zokanix shoots wide as Zokanix was given a gift right in front of the net. Emery now takes a hip check from number 14. That was a little <laughs> wow. Zekasi, but... Uh, <laughs> Zach Zolkanix, dumb. Uh, the way it looked like to me, Kamoka just lost complete complete control, attempting to break out of their own zone, and really handed Zach Zolkanix a gift. Uh, oh, man. I think maybe Zolkanix was even surprised with it. I think he was. I, I think he found himself unaware of where he was and uh, wasn't prepared to uh, shoot and score at that moment. That puck goes the length of the ice. We'll get another faceoff down in the Kingsville zone. 3.51 to go here in the first period. Live Greater Metro Hockey League action here on Wii TV. Dominic Pop along with Steve Pronger, the hardworking crew from Wii TV, bringing the action from the Kingsville Arena Complex. Play just in front of that Kingsville bench, kept in by the Dragons for a moment anyways. Now Bumpus will get a shot at it at the point. He'll send it down deep. Kotick wraps it around the wall to... Dara, he can't control the pass, or actually that was Baxter, one of the new players on the Kings. Steve will have more on him in just a moment. But uh, our first look at uh, number 11, Andrew Baxter, in the Kingsville uniform tonight. A couple of key guys out of the Kingsville zone, uh, Kingsville lineup tonight as well, Steve. You can uh, mention that in a moment. Havelka over to Kotick. Havelka now will pick up a loose puck for a moment. He can't get anywhere. Matty uh, Flips one off the glass. They say it hit the netting and out of play, so the faceoff comes to the blocker side of Jan Pacek of the Kingsville Kings. You know, a couple of the leading scorer doms that you do you mention that uh, Ryan Gruska and Ivan Hodulov both out of the game tonight for the Kingsville team Kings. You know, there's really both in double-digit scoring figures. A big loss for Coach Gary Estalos. Well, not those, those guys do more than just scoring. Yeah, uh, I mean, they're they're key members. You know, Ryan Gruska is a really an emotional, a physical leader mm -hmm. on this group. So uh, the Kingsville Kings are really going to have to push themselves to make up for the deficiencies not having those two in the lineup. Well, that's where the coach always says somebody else is going to get some of that ice time and they get a chance to prove themselves, especially in a game like tonight, a uh, very good Kamoka team here. So, Dom, if you don't mind me saying, it's going to be kids like uh, Cheslock and Sorrells and Baxter and Simmons who are going to have to make up that difference. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we've seen Cheslock on the ice just yet, though. Blocker saved there by Wood. He'll steer it to the left side. McKelvey takes a bump. Now there's a scrum inside the ball. Borner can't get anywhere with it. Ross into the neutral zone. McDonough's going to bring it right back in. McDonough falls. They're going to call a penalty, tripping against. It's going to be against the Kamoka Dragons. It looks like number 22, Avery Antone, going to the box. Yes, Dom, uh, the fourth power play opportunity here for the Kingsville Kings tonight. Uh, we have two minutes, 23 seconds roughly left in this period. I know Coach Stalls would love to take a two-goal lead into this intermission. Um, wondering what uh, Coach Beaulieu for the Kamoka side is thinking right now. They have to well, kill this. They've been killing off penalties well done. Well, they, they've done a good job. They've given one up on three here tonight. But, again, you just don't want to keep going to that, Steve. Uh, no. It's taxing on the players that have to do the penalty killing, and uh, it takes you out of rhythm uh, getting any of your offense going. I just think uh, you're, you're pushing the envelope hard against this Kingsville team when you give them that many power plays. There's a deflection right out front, and Wood makes a great save. And, again, that uh, net came off the magnet. So the play blown down. I think our uh, Kingsville player, Zach can you can see him gesturing towards the referee here on the screen. Um, I, you know, this Craig Wood, this goaltender, he knows when to push that post off, Dom. He's done it a couple times already. You know, he, he's, he's got it down. He's got a big body, big legs. He can spread open, push that, that nut off the mooring at, at will. At some point, I'm sure he will get a warning, Steve. Zolkanics behind the net now for Kingsville. Looks out front, nobody home there. He'll go back to Gardeman, over to Havelka, back to Gardeman. Gardeman has the only goal of the game. Havelka, Kotick, Havelka, one-timer, shot, blocked in front. I think it went after Zolkanics in front. Havelka now, a little flip pass to Gardeman. Kotick, one-timer, saved by Wood as he gets the stick down, and he covers up nicely. Keep That one actually looked like it was in the net, but uh, no signal from the official. Here we have a picture of Wood and uh, King, the Kingsville players Niederbach, protesting. Niederbach 
or that was Havelka, or Kodak, I should say, walking over and putting his arm around the official saying, come on, that was in, wasn't it? I think uh, numerous Kingsville players are feeling that puck was yep. in the net. Yep. Can it it could have been. It could have been. And, Dom, um, unfortunately, we can't go upstairs. We are the upstairs. We are the upstairs, yes. And uh, we could not see anything from our angle. Uh, we're just going to have to trust the refereeing staff that they got it right. 114 remaining in this Kingsville power play. 137 to go here in the first period. Pretty good pace to this game so far. Pretty good period of hockey. Two good teams going at it here. Yeah, if you're a hockey fan, Dom, you're loving this game. The Kingsville Kings fans here tonight are seeing a great hockey game. And then for a real treat, they get to see the Kamoka Dragons for the first time, the team that beat Kingsville. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so a little revenge factor, no doubt, in the minds of the Kingsville players. As that puck shot down the length of the ice again, Kingsville has to regroup behind their own net. Havelka, his pass doesn't connect with Burdoff. Dara takes a hit, loses his bucket for a moment, and the play blown down with that occurrence. Dom, when a player loses his helmet, uh, is the player in danger signal? The referees will uh, call the whist call uh, a whistle if the player cannot immediately get off the ice or put his helmet back on. You see Dara going back to the bench, looks okay. He's a pretty tough customer. Ross banks one off the wall, doesn't get it out though as the Kings Nicholson takes over the puck to Burdoff. Burdoff, quick shot, that's blocked in front, goes wide of the net. Under a minute to go here in the first period. Octavec takes a look over to Zekasi. His shot saved. Wood, another shot off the rebound as Nicholson came from wow. down low and a backhander and Wood equal to the test. He's had a good period, Steve. You know, Coach Bullio from uh, Kamoka Dom, he rides this guy. This is his go-to guy. Uh, he's won a championship in this league last year. And uh, I know Josh told me before the game, he expects he can beat Kingsville with this uh, player in net. Bird off shot. Dara right on the doorstep, couldn't get a stick on. There's a shot, scores! It's going to be Octavec on the power play. That makes the Kings two for four. And for Octavec, that's going to be goal number let me see if I can find his stats that's going to be his 10th goal in 10 games Steve yeah there's Bronco he's a he's a new addition to the Kingsville Kings as we look at him right there number 16 boy is he happy uh, hugging teammate Kodak there um, he didn't play last game he's in the lineup tonight and uh, Dom again power plays are going to be the key for the Kingsville Kings tonight Kamoka seems bent on taking penalties Kingsville's got to answer in like well they make him hurt and twice already uh, they've made the Dragons pay for taking the penalty. The Kings two for four on the power play as first period starts to wind down here at under 20 seconds to go. Simmons with the loose puck. He'll turn it up ice. Simmons over the center stripe over the blue line. Simmons, quick shot. That goes off a stick wide. Bumpus for, Drag for the Dragons. He'll flip one high. And we've got another delayed penalty here, Steve. As referee Al Provo has his arm up. It looks like it's going to go against Kingsville. As the buzzer goes to end the period, they let the clock run down. And I don't know if that's going to be the end of the period or what. But it uh, looks like there's going to be a penalty here. Yeah, Al, Al Provo's signaling to the teams to go to the uh, their respective dressing rooms. As the buzzer did, they put two seconds back up on the clock, Steve. So a little bit of confusion here. You know, our guy had it right. <laughs> our guy had it. Yeah, we look at an Al Provo right in front of us, Dom, and, uh, and now it looks like the Dragons are coming out. They're yeah. going to do a there's two seconds to go. A ceremony type face off just to scrub two seconds, or oh no, now they're now now they're sending him to the dressing room. They're going to say, okay, we'll we'll live with the uh, zeros on the clock. Go figure. Well, Kamoka will start the second period with with a power play. We do know that, Steve. Uh, and, you know, they're going to need to take advantage of it. That's for sure. They're down a couple of goals. They've given up a couple of power play goals. Quick thoughts of uh, that first yeah. period. Obviously, key to success for the Kingsville Kings in that period, Dom, was their ability to score two goals on two of four power plays. And that is what's going to bury the Kamoka Dragons. I know Kamoka, uh, they're going to be in tough, uh, not coming to the down the road here with the two leading scorers. Mm -hmm. But they can't compensate by that by taking penalties. They have to stay out of the box and play, play good defensive hockey. Um, 
Kingsville has sent them the message that you take a penalty against us, we're going to score a goal. So there's the story. After 20 minutes of play, the Kingsville Kings uh, leading it 2 nothing over the Kamoka Dragons. We're going to give everybody a break here, go to a commercial timeout, and uh, we'll come back uh, late in the intermission, recap that first period of play, and get you set up for the second. You're watching the Greater Metro Hockey League on we-tv.ca. Live and local, we TV. Live and local, we TV. Tom is trying to justify buying a new car. should do it need a good reason there's never been a better time to get yourself into the best-selling car in Canada for 17 years now during the Honda model clear out get a thousand dollar Civic bonus when you finance any new 2015 Civic model <laughs> I'm Joe Quenville, coach of the Chicago Blackhawks and a proud graduate of F.J. Brennan High. I can remember fondly my five great years at Brennan. It seems like just yesterday that we're there. There are a lot of great life lessons that I learned along the way, particularly from my teachers in the Catholic program. I want to wish everybody there good luck and uh, look forward to uh, being a proud uh, graduate and being a proud Cardinal going on here in, uh, here in Chicago.
I'm Mark Knight. I'm Steve Pronger. Catch all the Kingsville Kings hockey action live from the Kingsville Arena on Wii TV. That's right, Steve. Fridays and Sundays are fit for a king. The Kingsville Kings, exclusively on Wii TV. For Kingsville Kings hockey, we got you covered. I'm Mark. Welcome back to the Kingsville Arena Complex in southwestern Ontario, the site of Greater Metro Hockey League action on Wii TV, the Kamoka Dragons and the Kingsville Kings. That's what they have battled to after 20 minutes of play. The Kings leading it 2 nothing after the first period of play. The Kings looking for their 29th victory of the season. Kamoka is the team that has put that one blemish on the record. So the Kings looking to make up for that here this evening. Let's take a look at the first period scoring summary as we'll uh, give you the particulars on the two goals. Matthias Gardeman on the power play, his 24th of the campaign. Kotick and Havelka with the helpers at 13-14. And then Kingsville took advantage of the power play again. This time it was Bronco Aktevek, his 10th of the season on the power play. Zekasi and Devendera with the assist at 19-31. That's where we stand after 20 minutes of play. Kingsville was two for four on the power play. Kamoka was zero for one, but they will start this second period, I believe, with a power play. There was a penalty. We haven't got the official call yet, but there was a penalty being called at the 20 minute mark. So it does look like Kamoka will go to the power play uh, to start this second period. Dominic Papa, along with Steve Pronger and the entire hardworking crew here at we-tv.ca. Glad to have you all along for the ride here tonight. Our presentation of Greater Metro Hockey League action on Wii TV. We're certainly proud to be the exclusive broadcaster of Kingsville Kings hockey all season long. And we're hoping for a long run with them throughout this 2015-2016 campaign. This will be our last telecast before the holiday break. Uh, the Kings will then uh, hit the road for the next three games. They see their schedule. They'll be in Toronto tomorrow night, so that'll be three games and three nights for the Kings. Woo, that's Pretty a tough turnaround. Tough grind. That's a tough grind. And then they'll get some time out for the holiday break. They come back on January 8th, take on the London Lakers, and January 10th, the Toronto Predators will be the next opponent. So the, uh, the Kings will be road warriors for the next three games. Anyways, a little bit of a time uh, break there. Our next telecast won't be until the 2016 year, of course. And it's going to be a while before we're back here, Friday, January 15th. And it'll be against this very good Kamoka Dragons team. Hopefully they have their two other guys back in the lineup, uh, 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 Watson and uh, Shane O'Brien. Uh, as Steve mentioned earlier, 49 goals between those two players. Not in the lineup for Coach uh, Bolio here tonight. Uh, but, uh, again, too, the Kings are playing without a couple of key guys themselves, Hajilov and uh, Ryan Gruchka. So I guess it all evens out and when it's all said and done. The two teams are back on the bench, but we don't have officials. So that is causing a problem. <laughs> we well, don't have officials there, Steve. But, Dom, you know who else? We don't have officials at the moment, but, you know, we do have a special guest in the building tonight. Yes. Yes, we do indeed have a special guest. He's around here somewhere. I don't want to give it away. We'll see. We'll see. I, I know our producer, uh, Jared DeCarlo, is going to dig him up. And uh, he'll let everybody know uh, who our special guest is in the building tonight. Now we're getting the zebras back out onto the ice. So get some hockey we'll get some action hockey going action here in a few seconds, seconds I'm sure. sure. Uh, also, also, just if you want to tune into WeTV, TV, check, check out our, our website. website. Uh, a lot of great information. Our uh, website uh, uh, webmaster, I should call him, I guess, is Stuart Carter. And uh, I'll tell you what, Stuart gets a lot of great information up there about multiple area sports, uh, everything that's going on with WeTV. And uh, if you want to know more about us, there's a page for that. And if you want to get in touch with us, uh, we'd love to hear from you. And if you have any programming ideas, throw them at us. Yeah, Dom, you know what? The WeTV website has a great video on demand page where viewers can watch rebroadcasts of all our events uh, at any time they want at their convenience. And That's that the is, beauty. That's that the is the beauty. beauty. That's the beauty of webcasting. Uh, you don't, you're not locked into a schedule. And indeed, they have posted two minutes on the uh, board uh, against Kingsville. So, uh, as mentioned, Kamoka will start with the uh, power play. 
to start this second period. Chance to get some offense going, try to get this, yeah. uh, get back into this game a little bit here. Dom, and let me say the key for Kamoka going into the second period is they have to stay out of the box. They got to keep Absolutely. their hands and their sticks to themselves. Uh, you know, check with their shoulders as opposed to their hands and fists. And literally, they have an opportunity as a power play on the road. They have to convert. Um, Absolutely. I agree with you, Steve. But the, right. the keys for the Kingsville Kings now, they, they have to keep their bodies in shooting lanes and have what I say big sticks, right? Bodies in shooting lanes, sticks in passing lanes, take away all visibility from the Kamoka Dragons. Second period action underway here on Wii TV. The Kamoka Dragons and Kingsville Kings doing it up here at the Kingsville Arena. And the Dragons uh, are called for offside right away as number 17, Liam Galuli, jumping the gun there a little bit. Kotick slams one up against the board. Ross chips at it. Here's Maddie over the blue line. Quick shot. That goes high up over the net. Galuli now with some time and space. He'll send it back to Bumpus. What are we getting there? An icing call, I believe. Yes, indeed. So yeah. This this period off to a little bit of a slow start. Yeah, the key for uh, Kamoka on this power play is puck control. You have to effectively move the puck up ice, find the zones that are available to you, and set up and look for that uh, one-timer, that one cross-ice pass. Uh, icing the puck on a power play is not a good way to start, Dom. Ross over to Bumpus. Bumpus now will look up ice over to Gillooly. To McKelvey. McKelvey over the blue line. McKelvey. Sends it around the boards. Bumpus pinches in. He'll send it back to Hartwick. Hartwick looks out front. No, he'll s send it back to the point. Ross hustles over. He sends it down deep. Caught it. Can't get his stick on it. Right out front. Hartwick had a crack at it. Couldn't get the shot off. Ross unable to keep it in at the point. One minute to go in the Kamoka power play. We played our first minute of this second period. 2-0. The Kings leading it. Leach doing a good job killing some time here off this... Kamoka power play. Leach just locking the puck up on the board. Bumpus finally comes up with it and he'll try to start the rush here for Kamoka. A bank pass over to McKelvey. He can't get anywhere with it and right away Kingsville sends it back down. Dom, I can't say this would be the power play start that coach uh, Josh Bill is looking for. He's a proud coach. Four, four years with the London Knights himself. There's no way this is uh, what he expected coming out to start this period. Well, this is where you have to wonder, Steve, missing O'Brien and Watson. Uh, yeah. This is probably why it's a little bit sluggish. Uh, you're missing your two marksmen there and I'm sure they get power play time based on what we see with their stats. You know, and I mentioned 49 goals between the two of them, Dom. They have 71 assists between the two of them, maybe even a more important statistic. So they're obviously the catalyst of the offensive end of this uh, hockey team. And, you know, this is where the power play is struggling. Penalty has elapsed, but uh, Kamoka is going to go right back on the power play as there's a call being made, again, behind the play. And it's going to be a slashing call. So right like that, just like that, Simmons is going to go to the box, and Kamoka will go right back on the power play. Well, Kamoka has got a golden opportunity, as they say, Dom. That uh, last power play to start this period wasn't very successful. Maybe they've learned something. Maybe they just need to shake the dust off. You know, uh, they got the bus legs and then the dressing room legs. But uh, really, Coach Bull, has got to get these guys firing now and uh, get within one goal of the Kingsville Kings. Well, right away, Kingsville will send it down as they control the faceoff. Not much good offense going right now for Kamoka, despite the having two power plays to start the second period. Foxa dishes it in. Pacek sets it up there for Havelka. He can't get anywhere with it. Antone had it for a moment. He couldn't do anything with it. Now Havelka with some time and space. Havelka taking what he's given to him. Havelka shot. That goes off a stick up over the net. But uh, boy, oh boy, a good move there by Havelka taking the ice that uh, was given to him. There's another shot that doesn't uh, hit the net and actually goes out of play. This Kamoka power play is really struggling, Steve. Dom, what happens when you have power plays back to back? Typically you have your first power play line out and then perhaps your second, but when you have back to back power plays, often you find your third line and perhaps even your fourth line getting minutes on a power play. They're not used to that. Mm -hmm. uh, back to back power plays can actually at some point be a disadvantage. 
Here's Ross. He'll try to get something going for Kamoka as he shovels it into the Kingsville zone. Pashik plays it around the boards and does a good job getting it out. And Pashik doing his part there in killing this penalty. Number four, Joshua Bumpus. To Gillily, over to Ross. Ross takes a hit but gets the puck into the zone. Hartwick is taken down. Hartwick looks like he's shaken up on the play here a little bit and finally it's blown down as Hartwick is still down. I didn't see what happened there exactly, Steve, but uh, he's not getting up right away. You know, Dom, I wasn't watching either. I was seeing Devin Dara try to blay the body on big mm -hmm. uh, Matthew Ross there, right in front of us, in front of the Kamoka bench. Uh, Hartwick holding his uh, jaw or his teeth or nose, skating yep. towards us there. Yeah, you can see it there on the monitor. He's uh, got his mouth his hand in his mouth area. Hopefully nothing too serious there and we get number nine Colin Hartwick back into this game. Hartwick coming into the uh, game here tonight. It's 16 games played, 14 goals and seven assists. He has three game winning goals, Steve, for the team which uh, ties him with uh, Shane O'Brien. Yeah, they certainly don't want his goals out of the lineup too. That could be a big uh, big hole to try to pull yourself out with those three players out of the, out of the lineup. But let me give some credit to the Kingsville Kings penalty mm -hmm. killer. Uh, Devin Dara, Matt Matty, these guys are doing a tremendous job of forcing uh, Kamoka. Well, here comes the Dragons again, trying to get something going. There's a quick shot by Bumpus as he had a puck slide right over to him, just off to the side of the net. And Jan Pasek makes the save, covers up nicely. 21 seconds remaining in the Kamoka power play, 16.08. To go here in the period, and there's a look at Matthew Ross. Again, Matthew Ross, six foot four, 230 pounds from London, Ontario. Played last week representing Kamoka in the showcase game in Port Coburn. What a great addition! Great addition. Quick shot right off the face off there. And Kingsville again gets control of it and sends it down the length of the ice. Ross can't get anywhere. Dara intercepts. He'll send it into the Kamoka zone. Penalty has elapsed. Kingsville successful again in the penalty kill. Kamoka now zero for three with the extra man. And that puck uh, goes up into the netting. And we'll get a face off in the neutral zone, uh, I believe. Yeah, Dom, generally as a rule of thumb, if you don't score goals on the power play when you're the road team, you're not going to win many games on the road. You have to seize those opportunities to bury the home there team. And Dom, is. there, there he, he is. is. There's our special guest. There's our special guest. Oh, my. Look at him. St. Nick himself uh, taking in a little Kingsville Kings action here tonight. Dom, it looks like he's looking from his directions. Maybe he's lost <laughs> his sleigh out there. He can't. Where do I water my reindeer? Um, but nice to see Santa here at the Kingsville Recreational Complex. He gets around, doesn't he? Play into the Kamoka zone. We're at even strength right now. Zimmerman chips one in. Zekezi, Zekezi, I should say, goes back up to Zokanix, over to Niederbach. Niederbach, right side, uh, left side, shoots it around the wall. Emery takes a hit, and what are we getting called here, Steve? Someone took exception, Dom, it looks like, to big Niederbach uh, playing his game. <laughs> Yeah, he he's he's made friends all over the league. Dom, sure it looks has. like yeah. uh, number 43 from Kamoka is, is his newest friend. Tyson Levesque retaliates and he'll pay the price for it. Slashing is the call. So Kingsville goes to their fifth power play. They're two for four right now. Dom, there was a quick shot of Ludwig Niederbach leading scorer of the Kingsville Kings. Dom, he has 50 points in 27 games and now he found some, finds himself out on the power play again. Here comes the Kings now on the power play. Pavelka, long shot, that goes wide of the net. Giving chase with Zokanix, he can't get there. Niederbach keeps it in, quick shot, saved by Wood. A good job there by the uh, goaltender. And Dom there, Wood. after that save, there's our player to watch for the Kingsville Kings, Marcel Kotek, and you know what? The Norfolk Vikings in the last game watched Kotek put up six points against them in a 19 to one decision. So. Big game for Marcel Kotak from Chog, uh, sorry, from Prague, Czechoslovakia, and a great addition for the Kingsville Kings. 
137 remaining here in the Kingsville power play. 14.27 to go here in the period. There's, they're doing some work on the ice, I think, Steve, in front of the uh, bench right here, in front of the Kamoka bench, actually. Yeah, referee Provost is down on the ice. Uh, I can barely see what he's doing. There's a shot, uh, CJ Emery uh, blocking our view a bit, uh, talking to linesman McInnes. Uh, I'm not sure what referee Provo is doing down there. Looks like a little bit of ice repair. It's nice to see Al bending over like that, getting involved. <laughs> I'll work an extra hard tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, uh, on behalf of everybody here at uh, WE TV, uh, we'd like to wish everybody a happy, safe holiday season. Enjoy it. Enjoy the family time and friends. And have a great uh, new year as well. Hope, uh, hopefully 2016 is a special year for everyone. Face off, a little bit of a scrum there. Kingsville finally does get control here. This is Oktavec who has one of the goals here tonight. Back to Burdoff, Burdoff to Oktavec. Oktavec winds up, shot, save or blocked in front anyways. Didn't get in the net, that's for sure. And Kaboka able to send it down the length of the ice. 1.15 to go in the Kingsville power play. Oktavec can't handle that pass. Burdoff has to go back. Hartwick, uh, good to see him back on the ice, Steve, as he was shaken up. Yeah, this is a big penalty kill for uh, Kamoka Dom. They need to kill this off and create some energy they can take into the next five on five situation. Kingsville came up with a turnover there. They sent it into the Kamoka zone. Now they control down low, bring it out top to Burdoff. His quick shot. A lot of bodies in front. That doesn't get through. Nicholson can't get a stick on it, and it comes back out into the neutral zone. Burdoff. Over to Zekezi. He pulls up. He looks at the situation over now into the neutral zone. There's a shot. Again, it goes off a leg and wide. I believe that's Burdoff pinching in from his point position and takes a pretty good hit. To good reaction on the bench there. Oktavec, Zekezi, his shot just wide as he was looking for the short side there. Oktavec. Nicholson, Zekasi can't keep it in, or does he? No, he doesn't. And Kamoka has killed the penalty off, so Kingsville is now two for five with the extra man. Score remains two nothing. There's a shot from the right wing off the Zulcanic stick. Would no problem handling that. And we'll get a face off. 12.36 to go here in period number two. Dominic, the benefit to uh, killing penalties on the road is, believe it or not, your players get a chance to rest. I know you're not thinking, okay, we're, we're down a man, it's tough for us, but players are on the bench, there's a player in the penal box, penalty box, and these people are resting. Oh, well, we're getting another penalty here. Ross is going over to the box. I didn't see the call here, see, I didn't even see an arm go I, up. Neither did I. I. I wonder if this was after the whistle. Kingsville likes it. They're going on their sixth power play. Back-to-back -back power plays again, just like uh, Kamoka had earlier on. Tom, that had to happen after the whistle. It had to, because nothing, there was no indication of any problem. Gardeman's going to start things up over Ooh. to Niederbach. And Gardeman gets a hit from McKelvey, and McKelvey's going to go to the box for this one. Kingsville needs to give up the puck here. And his penalty's on delay. This is... Niederbach, Niederbach looking for some room. His shot, that goes wide of the net. Kingsville continues to control. I would give up the puck here, Steve. Yeah, Kingsville just needs to slap it at net. Get, let someone touch it, Dom. They need to get that 5-3 opportunity. Five and three here. Well, they do better, though. What do we know? What do we know, <laughs> right? Yes. I believe uh, that was number, I want to say it was number 25, so Canucks. It was, or maybe it was Matt Maddie, number 17. We'll wait for the official announcement, but the, that goal coming on with a delayed penalty going to be called. And Dom, um, this much I can tell you, uh, Stuart Carter just whispered in my ear that that penalty that we missed was in fact roughing after the whistle. Ah, which there you go. So that will be a power play goal, and Kingsville will continue on the power play for another minute 18. 
Dom, this could have been a turning point in this game so far. Uh, Kamoka had to kill this penalty. One more goal, 3-0 lead. It's going to be tough for the Kamoka to do anything to come back against these yeah, Kingsville they, Kings. They've, uh, they've certainly dug themselves into a hole here. Now they've got a two-minute penalty up there, but I, I see four four guys on the ice for Kamoka, which is right. I don't know why they have two penalties up on the board there. One one should be erased, Dom. Yep. You think? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. It's a five-on-four situation here. Uh, Kingsville continues to work on the power play, and that shot goes up over the uh, glass. It was touched by a Kamoka stick, so face-off will remain inside the dragon zone. It's a good shot of C.J. Nicholson there. Yeah, one of my favorite players here. Uh, Me Steve. too, Dom. I just love the energy he brings. I love the way he plays the game. He's an outstanding skater. And, and he's, you know, he's just a good energy guy. And he's found the net 15 times so yeah, far this year. he's a player. He's yep. a player. That shot from Octavik, uh, handled there by Wood. Now they've got the penalties uh, situation corrected uh, up there, Steve. Yeah, and as we look at uh, Craig Wood, uh, one more comment about C.J. Nicholson, Dom. He comes from Burlington, Ontario. Yep. And Burlington, as you know, the Halton Ravens in this league, I've said it a couple of times, how did they miss this kid? Uh, you know, yeah, you, know uh, you, you never know about behind the scenes. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe C.J. just wanted to change the scenery. Who knows? Who knows? That is true. We're happy to have him here, that's for sure. Right, you don't always want to play at home, right? Yep. Gardeman now sends it down low. Back to Gardeman on the half wall to the point. This is Havelka. He'll send it off to the side and that one timer blocked a Kotick stick. And Kamoka is able to send it down. Under a minute to go on the uh, power play. Just 10 40 and counting down here in the second period. Kingsville with a 3 0 lead. Niederbach down the left side with some speed, a quick shot, Wood makes the save and covers up nicely. And Dom, there's that matchup behind the net, Big Niederbach and uh, Matthew Ross. I, I, you know, look for these two to go at it all game. And uh, I was excited when I saw uh, Niederbach in the one-on-one -on -one situation on the far side of the rink against Ross. It was indeed uh, number 17 for the uh, Kings of Kings and Matt Matty scoring. That's his 14th of the season. Niederbach with the assist on the power play at 9.06. Steve, that's the official scoring play. Well, Dom, Kingsville finds himself in a great position at this point. Sure. Um, and, Lund uh, sorry, Kamoka. Uh, they got a, a deep hole. Well, they got to they gotta try to change the complexion of this game, Steve. That's the bottom line. They, they have to kill this penalty and then start getting some offense going. There's a quick shot from point. Wood makes a safe. Scores on the rebound. The Kings, again, making the power play happen as they are now four for seven with the extra man. I think that might be Daniel Burdoff's goal. We'll wait for the official announcement, but uh, Kingsville making Muskoka, or I should say Kamoka, pay the price, taking the penalties. Yeah, Dom, you know, you take seven, give the opposing team, the home team, seven power play opportunities, and you're not even halfway through the games. That's a dangerous situation to be in for any road any road team. It's a 4 nothing lead, Steve, and all four goals have come on the power play. That tells you where the difference in this game is right now. You know, Dom, we saw early in the game, it appeared like the Kamoka Dragons could play with Kingsville 5-on-5. Five five. Leave it at that. Simmons making some moves. Quick shot, good save there by Wood. You, know, you can't blame, uh, I'll tell you what, you can't blame uh, Craig Wood. He's made some good saves, and this game might be a little uglier than what it is if he's uh, not in the pipes there tonight. McDonough takes a hit in front of the Kingsville bench, but he can tear it, continues on. Now he loses it for a moment anyways to number 73. That was Bunch. Dragons trying to get something going here. Simmons says no. I'll send it right back into the Dragon zone. Emery behind his own net. Right side pass over to Levesque. Or I should say Galuli. Galuli's pass doesn't connect. Zekasi, he'll start the rush. Fights off a hit. Zekasi over the blue line. He's got Baxter with him. Zekasi looking for somebody out front. Zekasi's shot goes wide. Galuli, his pass, not a good one. He intercepted temporarily, but fortunately Emery was following up. Emery now hustling into the zone. He takes a hit, and uh, we're going to get a penalty. It looks like 
Kamoka is going to go on the power play here, Steve. Yeah, it looks like referee Provo is signaling interference, Dom. I took exception to the way uh, Sorrells took CJ Emery down. And uh, again, Kamoka now has an opportunity to show some respect for themselves at this point. Uh, again, the lifeblood of uh, any road team is power plays. And Dom, like I say, the scoring was, it was Devin Dara. Uh, getting Kingsville's fourth goal, assisting with player we were talking about, C.J. Nicholson and Bronco Octavic. For Dara, it's his 24th of the season. And that was at 9.50 of the second period. Let's see if Kamoka can get some offense going here with this power play, their fourth one of the game. Bumpus tries to send it over to number 21, that's Enger. Enger makes a move, spinning, trying to get away from Havelka. Behind the net, pass out front. There's a quick shot that goes wide off of Fox's stick. Bump is a quick shot, deflected wide. That came off of uh, number 88, stick McKelvey. Mocha finally getting some shots at least towards the Kings on that. Haven't hit it, but uh, at least they're getting something going. 118 remaining in the Mocha power play. Fox up. Over to. Enger, Enger makes a nice move. Enger now carries, and that's going to be offside as Hartwick couldn't ride the blue line. Faceoff comes outside the Kingsville zone. Dumb on the power play, quick decisions have to be made when you're approaching the other team's blue line. It's kind of a dead zone, if you will, and the you know turnovers can't happen at the blue line. And certainly, you have to make a decision: can I carry the puck over the line or dump it in? But you can't stall and go offside like that. Certainly on a power play. Bumpus, nice pass here into Galili, over to Enger, his shot saved there by Pasha. Foxa keeps it in at the point, he'll send it into Enger. Enger, over to Galili, and he one times it wide as he had half an empty net there. A battle out front, Hanton taking some uh, hits there in front by McDonough. That pass deflected, and Kings was able to get it out of the zone. Bumpus has to go back. He'll set up behind his own net. Half a minute remaining in the Kamoka power play. 7-10 to go here in period number two. The Kings with 4 nothing lead. Foxa pulls up. He can't get anywhere as he's stripped off the puck by Devin Dara. Dara now battling with Foxa. Dara can't get anywhere with it. And coming back is number three, Ross. He's hit there by Leach. Kamoka just sends it into the neutral zone. Zimmerman gets a stick on it. He can't get by Borner. Borner will send it down. That uh, kills the remaining time. Kingsville does a good job of the penalty kill. Kamoka now is zero for four with the extra man. And on the flip side of it, Kingsville four for seven with the extra man. There's the story of the game, folks. Yeah, I think John Pasci won a little rest there after a, a penalty killing effort. And Dominic, truly special teams have been the story of this game. Kingsville Kings ability to score four power play goals and the Kamoka Dragons inability to score anything on their power play. Uh, power plays are lifeblood for any road team. For sure, for sure. Kamoka's just been ineffective uh, on their power plays tonight. And their penalty kill has struggled now, Steve. Well, at least four times. <laughs> yes. Well, Kingsville's over 50% on the power play tonight, so it tells you to stay out of the box. Yeah, Dom's most teams are typically 20% on the power play. Kingsville's at 50%. Mm -hmm. That'll win any hockey game. If you get enough power plays, it will, that's for sure. Nicholson will pick up the loose puck. He sends it over to, I believe that was Burdoff. Burdoff. Pass doesn't connect. Arnold chips one up to number five, I believe that is McKenzie. He can't get anywhere. And now the puck sent down the length of the ice. This will not make icing. 5.45 and counting down here in the second period. Kingsville with a comfortable 4-0 lead. Hartwick hits his man. He comes up with a loose puck. Mapes gets a stick on it. Burdoff takes over for Kingsville. A stretch pass up to Zokanix. Zokanix, the lone man rush, now waits for some help. Gardeman moving up. There's the shot. That's blocked. It goes wide and that actually goes up over the glass into the netting. See where they put this face off. It should be in the Kamoka zone, Steve. Was a great shot of Matthias Gardman from Thunder Bay, Ontario. What a smart hockey player. Second in scoring on this Kingsville team uh, with 49 points so far in the year and an excellent center iceman. Mm -hmm. And uh, he plays the smart game, I'll tell you. He's a very methodical player on that ice. He's patient. Uh, he's got
got good hands, and uh, he gets results, that's for sure. Well, we see the player now who makes all the noise noise on that line. Niederbach, well, what a great combination uh, for Coach Gary Astolis uh, with this trio. I'll tell you what, uh, he's got a nice mix as Niederbach tries to get to the front, and then he takes a hit from Hartwick, and Hartwick is going to go to the box. As Al Provo immediately put the arm, I'm going to say it might be an elbowing call here, Steve. Yeah, it was a hands to the face, an elbow, a punch in the face, roughing could be a multiple of things, but again, Dominic, Kamoka finds themselves going to the box. I hope the Kamoka players haven't given up on this game. Um, I know they have a proud coach, an experienced coach, and I can't believe he would let his team just kind of run amok, so to speak, out there. Colin Hartwick is in the box. Eighth power play of the game coming up here for Kingsville. They are four for seven. As we get a little bit of a discussion here, I'm not sure what the uh, debate is all about there, Steve, but I'm not sure. They've got two minutes up on the board. There's 4.58 to go. They're going to call it a cross check. I didn't see a cross check, to be honest with you. I thought it may be an elbow, but whatever. Al Provo saw it differently on the ice, and he made the call. You know, we, Ludwig Niederbach puts himself in position to get treated like that, and good for him. Actually, they've made it a five minute penalty, Steve. Wow. So that is huge. Well, let's see what Kamoka has in the can uh, for five minutes, Dom. It's critical that they keep London, uh, sorry, um, Kingsville off the scoreboard at this point. We Zimmerman with a partial stick. breakaway. Zimmerman can't get the shot up. We're going to get a... This could be a penalty shot. We're going to get a penalty shot, absolutely, as the stick was thrown, and the penalty shot has been called. Number eight, Jackson Zimmerman will take the penalty shot. Yeah, Dom, when you impede uh, the puck or a player by throwing the stick when uh, the opposing player had an open lane or view to the ring, it's going to be a penalty shot every time. So here we go, a little showdown action at the Kingsville Arena. Jackson Zimmerman slowly skates up, wheeling and dealing. Zimmerman shoots, and it's wide. And Zimmerman tried to go up high. Jan Peshek is uh, the starting goalie on this team for a reason, Dom. We know Coach Estalis has faith in him in all situations. The most wins in the entire Greater Metro Hockey League, and he comes up big for the Kingsville Kings there, maintaining his shutout and con <laughs> continuing, quite frankly, to give the Kamoka Dragons nothing tonight. Peshek with two shutouts on the year so far. Great save percentage, too. 0.948 save percentage for Jan Peshek. That's very consistent. Enger to take the draw against Gardeman inside the Kingsville zone to the blocker side of Ian Pacek. 444 remaining in the Kingsville five minute major power play. This could be the game, Steve, right here. Absolutely. If, if Kingsville pops a couple in on this power play, kiss this one goodbye. Dom, you're right. If Kingsville scores, the power play doesn't go away. Not on a major penalty. Niederbach fans on that pass. Kings have to go back to their own zone. Niederbach can't handle the pass. So Kennex gives chase. Niederbach now gets a loose puck inside the Kamoka zone. His pass deflected. That goes up over the glass. We'll get a face off inside the Dragons end. Dom, we've enjoyed having the Kamoka Dragons here tonight. In that first period, it was a good period yeah, of good hockey. Pace, yeah. Uh, Kamoka was playing well. They were doing whatever they can to kill off the penalties and doing it well, jumping or holding their ground. And, and uh, it's unfortunate at this point, but the next goal from Kingsville could absolutely bury this team and it'll be lights out. Velka to Kotick. Kotick back to the blue line. Back over to Velka. His shot blocked there by number 21. That's Inger. Gardeman. Velka. Kotick. Tough angle as it rolls through, but the whistle had gone. Uh, Provo had called the play dead. Uh, Wood made the save, got it uh, well enough to get the whistle. Yeah, we saw that puck trickling behind Wood, rolling across the goal line. Al Provo had blown the whistle. I'm sure our viewers at home saw that as well. Um, coaching staff from Kamoka now, they're probably wondering, uh, thankful, <laughs> if you will. Yep. Well, again, as soon as the official loses uh, sight of that puck, he's going to blow, blow it dead. 3.54 remaining in the Kingsville power play. Tom, there's another good shot on the bench of Ross from uh, the Kamoka Dragons. A big, solid defenseman. It appears like he's on the ice every other shift. Yeah, he's logged a lot of ice time already tonight, that's for sure. Kingsville controls from the draw. This is Octavec 
Back to the point to Matty. To Octavik. Octavik goes cross ice to Zakezi. Back to Matty. He fans on it and puck comes out into the neutral zone. Kingsville has to regroup. Octavik. Nicholson. Nicholson with some speed. Pulls up. Sends it to Octa Octavik. To Matty. His wrist shot. Hits a body in front and there's a huge scrum there. Bodies flying all over the place. And now we get some more pushing and shoving. Again, C.J. Nicholson in the fray there. We know Al Provo, uh, referee Al Provo, is going to blow that whistle immediately. He loses sight of that puck. He's wasting no time blowing the whistle. Kamoku can be thankful for that. Uh, but there was another opportunity, if he would have been a late whistle, for Kingsville to have an open net. 323 and counting down in this uh, Kingsville power play. On the half wall. Here's Havelka, back to Gardeman. Gardeman sends it down low, looks for the give and go, doesn't get it, comes back to the point to Havelka. His shot, locked in front. Zokanix whacks at it, scores! I think it's gonna be Niederbach getting this one. A power play tally for the Kings, makes it five nothing. Yeah, big Niederbach, uh, Dom loves to be in the blue ice. Not, not physically, of course, but when he smells that puck there, he's there and he taps in that that nice little juicy rebound for the fifth uh, Kingsville goal. So Kingsville makes, again, the Kamoka Dragons pay for the penalties, and they'll stay on the power play with 3.02 remaining as the five-minute major continues to number nine, that being Colin Hartwick. Dom, I'm sure there are a lot of league watchers and people watching uh, the GMA and GMHL and figured tonight was the night for the Kingsville Kings. Kamoka can beat them, and a lot of people were hoping Kamoka could come down to Kingsville and put Kingsville in their place. Doesn't look like it. Not right now, that's for sure. You just wonder a little bit, Stephen, and not that two players can you know make a, that big a difference, but when you're losing 49 goals on you, how much of a difference that would have been here tonight? 49 goals, 71 assists, and now Kamoko finds themselves on a, another unending another penalty camp. Penalty this time it's going to be Kotick lighting it up. Marcel Kotick, his seventh of the season. Kingsville now six for nine on the power play. This one is getting ugly. Yeah, there's Kotick there, our player to watch for the Kingsville Kings. Had a big night against a Norfolk uh, in a 19 to one win, and now he finds himself sharing in the scoring here. Uh, and again, Dom, two minutes and 51 seconds remaining on the Kingsville Kings power play. So there you see the uh, numbers. It's six nothing now with 246 still remaining on the power play. Kings will work on their 10th power play. They are six for nine right now. And it looks like Emery's going to the box right now as well. So there are going to be two men down. Kings will be five on three for two minutes now. At least two minutes, yeah. Not sure what the call was against Emery. Now Provo over to. That's Coach Bullio yep, Dom. Yep. No doubt he's uh, feeling the frustration of this score at this point. You know, Dom, he's had a great junior career himself, played pro hockey, was a draft pick to the Philadelphia Flyers. He knows what's going on, and uh, no doubt he's feeling a little bit frustrated and wondering, gee, what can I do to get out of this mess? Uh, it's, a, it's an ugly mess right now if you're a Kamoka Dragon. For the Kingsville Kings, you know what? <laughs> you're sending a message. Don't let us go on the power play, we'll make you pay. Now they work with a two-man advantage. Burdoff in the middle of the zone. Back to Burdoff. This is Zekezi. Third off one timer, Wood gets a stick on it, up over the glass. Face off to come inside the Kingsville zone. Since the Kingsville Kings lost two to one against Kamoka, Steve, mm -hmm. since that game, they've outscored their opponents up to this point, including tonight's goals, 73 to seven. Wow, good job by Stu Carter giving us that statistic, Don, but that's an incredible, you think that, so for every one goal, they've scored seven. They've scored seven, so that's, that's just, it's an incredible statistic, and I, I'm sure no matter what hockey league you are on, you're, you're going to really be hard-pressed to find a, a scoring disadvantage like that. Kings now moving that puck around. There's a blocked shot right back to the point, though, to Kotick. Kotick will get another shot. That one goes wide as 
Bunch had made a nice block but didn't get the puck, puck out. A broken stick now for Anton Haskell, Husker Baxter. Baxter is a five on two. And before Anton can even get back in the play, Havelka makes it seven nothing. Don, I question Anton's uh, decision yeah, here to yeah. leave the rink and uh, leave Stay a five there. on two. Stay there. You know, your Dom, body. Your body can still get in shooting That's lanes, right. block shots, fall on a puck, uh, check a person. Uh, you know, that, that decision to come back to the bench, quite frankly. That was a bad decision, Steve. Bottom line, you got to stay where you're at. And he left his team stranded back there, five on two. It's tough enough at five on three, let alone five on two. And Kingsville made them pay. Well, Dom, safe to say the Kamoka Dragons did not expect to find themselves in this position tonight. Did they expect oh. to win the game with their two leading scorers out? Who knows? I'm sure they come in here as a bunch of proud guys, and as you always see, someone's got to step up and make the most of that available ice time. So 152 still on the power play. That's uh, the Hartwick uh, five minute major penalty. Kingsville is now seven for 10 on the power play. All seven goals tonight, Steve, on the power play. Pass out front, Leach got a stick on it. He couldn't put it in. This is Maddie back down to Leach. Leach looks it over, over to Maddie on the half wall. Leach to the point. Zekasi to Leach. Zekasi gets it in the middle. Shot saved by Wood. A nice glove save by the nice gloves goaltender. Right, you know Ryan, you know Craig Wood, uh, Dom. He's he's won a championship in this league last year. He's won at the level. He knows what it takes to win at this level. And I think he's a fine looking goaltender, Steve. I don't mind him. He's just not getting a lot of help in front of him tonight. No, he's had f uh, seven goals scored on him when they've been a man down. Yep. Not many goalies would be making those saves either. The well, goals have been very, very sharp passing. One timers. Well, now what are we getting in front of the net? Again, we got some more pushing and shoving. Now we're going to get the gloves drop. Burdock and McKenzie are going to tangle. Before it really gets uh, going, the officials are there to break it up. Well, Dom, you, you have to kind of expect this thing. The frustration level is very high with the Kamoka Dragons. Uh, many of their players are just searching to do anything to give themselves a spark of energy, to try to get Kingsville to go to the box. So. They can play in the power play, but uh, Josh McKenzie is like 16, 15 years old, Steve. Yeah, and he's uh, from British Columbia, and listed as a 2000 date uh, of birth, year of birth. And uh, Daniel Burdoff certainly gave the young man a welcome to Kingsville. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'm sure there's going to be a wash. There's a little bit of a discussion. Uh, Linesman McGinnis there is uh, with his arms crossed, uh, no doubt consulting with uh, Al Pro. You got to wonder what uh, Gary Estolov and the Kingsville staff you know is what? thinking right now. We haven't seen Cheslock. You see him there on the uh, bench here, number 98, right in the middle of the screen. Uh, you know, uh, uh, hopefully we'll get to see him a little bit tonight, especially with the seven nothing lead. But I don't know if he's had a shift yet tonight, Steve. I haven't seen him on the ice, but you know what? It's critical that young players uh, get some developmental minutes, and certainly we'd like to see Cheslock in the game. I'm not second guessing Coach Gary here by any means. I'm not doing that, but uh, you know, with the seven. Why not? <laughs> well, with the seven. <laughs> Why not give him some ice? Because <laughs> I'm up there. There, there he is. <laughs> there he is. Yeah, we'd like to see young Cheslock in the game for sure. Yeah. Um, the only way he's going to grow as a hockey player is to get minutes in this league and uh, playing and uh, with a 7 nothing lead. Um, Why not? Why not? Why not? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's all I'm saying. I'm not second-guessing Coach Estolas at all, but uh, why not? <laughs> and I wonder now, you know, looking at the Kingsville bench, what uh, Coach Josh Bilio is thinking. Well, he, he's, he's thinking, you know what? <laughs> I mean, he's got to tell his guys in between periods here, okay, enough of the penalties. Let's just try to win the period. Let's try to do some positives uh, so we can take that out of this game. You're not coming back against this Kingsville team. Uh, you're down seven goals. I'm sorry. You're not going to score seven in a period against this team. It's just not going to happen. So you come back and you try to win the period. You win a couple of shifts. You try to get some confidence going that way and you try to make it respectable. That's what you do. Yeah, the Kamoka Dragons, Dom, they, they beat this Kingsville team mm -hmm. uh, the last time they met. They've also have 15 wins overall in this league. So they're no slouches. They, they've won 15 games. 
um, you know, that's enough to certainly cement them as a playoff team. Uh, so Kingsville actually has a seven minute penalty posted. Cheslock's gonna go serve it. Thanks so much for <laughs> Well, he got in the game, I guess. Uh, but there's also a five up on the Kingsville side. So eventually, when all of this shakes down, Kingsville can continue on a power play, four on three, uh, with Hartwick still serving a minute eight on his five minute major. But eventually, if this is all what I'm seeing here, Kamoka will have a power play eventually, Steve. Yeah, it looks like Daniel Burdock might have got the aggressor, the instigator, and got the extra two mm -hmm. in that whole thing. So Kingsville, under a minute to go here in the period now. It was 2-0 after the first. Kingsville has lit it up here in the second with five power play tallies. Octavec back to Kotick. Kotick. Winds it up, saved by Wood. He steers it into the corner. Havelka pinching in, control that puck. He takes over, he spins in circles. Havelka now on the half wall, back out to the point. Havelka to Kotick. Kotick, back pass to Octavic. Octavic, Kotick. Octavic tries to get out front. And that puck slowly rolls into Woods. He steers it into the corner. Kotick. Octavic, one timer. That goes wide of the net. Ovelka picks up the loose puck. Octavec with time running out. Octavec trying to get to the front of the net. Scores with one second remaining in the period. Or I should say four seconds. No, one second. <laughs> I had it right. I'm reading my numbers right here. I was looking at the uh, time remaining on the uh, power play. Eight power play goals on 11 chances for Kingsville. There's still three seconds remaining in the Hartwick penalty. One second remaining in the period. Oktevic gets the goal. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And that'll do it. Mercifully, the period comes to an end for the Kamoka Dragons as they are down 8 nothing, We'll start the third period with four on four hockey. Eventually, Kamoka will have a power play. Again, Steve, you know what? We talked about it after the first. Got to stay out of the box. That didn't happen. No, Dom, the key to this game has now just turned into a special team. It's a special team's affair. And you said, well, I give it a big Wii TV. Wow. 8 uh, nothing, Kingsville Kings against the only team that has ever beaten them, the Kamoka Dragons. And uh, we certainly were expecting more of Kamoka uh, coming into this game. I'm sure everybody was, including the fans here. Good crowd tonight. Nice crowd here. Who is expecting really nice to see crowd. a great game, a, a challenging game from the uh, Kamoka Dragons. So that's the story. After 40 minutes of play, the Kingsville Kings have put them into a ver themselves into a very comfortable position, leading it eight nothing after two periods of hockey. We're gonna take a break. We'll come back uh, towards the end of the intermission. We'll recap the second period scoring and get some other information out to you. You're watching Greater Metro Hockey League action on Wii TV. We'll be back. Live and local, Wii TV. Tom is trying to justify buying a new car. That should do it. Need a good reason? There's never been a better time to get yourself into the best-selling car in Canada for 17 years. Now, during the Honda Model Clearout, get a $1,000 Civic bonus when you finance any new 2015 Civic model. <laughs>
I'm Mark Knight. I'm Steve Pronger. Catch all the Kingsville Kings hockey action live from the Kingsville Arena on Wii TV. That's right, Steve. Fridays and Sundays are fit for a king. The Kingsville Kings, exclusively on Wii TV. For Kingsville Kings hockey, we got you covered. I'm Mark Knight. I'm Steve Pronger. Catch all the Kingsville Kings hockey action live from the Kingsville Arena on Wii TV. That's right, Steve. Fridays and Sundays are fit for a king. The Kingsville Kings, exclusively on Wii TV. For Kingsville Kings hockey, we got you covered. The two teams have returned to the ice. Welcome back to the Kingsville Arena Complex. Uh, Dominic Papa and Steve Pronger bringing you Greater Metro Hockey League action with the Kingsville Kings as they host the Kamoka Dragons. It was 2-0 Kingsville after the first period, and then the Kings took advantage of a bunch of power plays in the second period. Six goals. That's the breakdown. Matty, his 14th. Dara, Niederbach, Kotick, Havelka, Oktavec all getting in on it. And it was just a steady stream to the penalty box for the Kamoka Dragons. Four on four hockey to start this third period. Glad to have you along here on Wii TV. Dominic Papa with Steve Pronger. And we'll get you more information as the period goes on uh, for the Kingsville Kings and our telecasts. Right now, though, like I said, four on four hockey for the next three and a half or so. And then Kamoka will have a two minute uh, power play. As they'll go to their fifth one of the game. They're zero for four, obviously. Kodak, who's had a good game here tonight, leaves it for Gardeman. Oktavec coming in late. Over to Havelka. Havelka to Kodak. These guys have seen a lot of ice time tonight. Gardeman, Kodak, Havelka. We've got a penalty behind the play. I'm not sure who's going to the box here, Steve. I think it's going to go against Kamoka, though. Yeah, your Bach uh, looks in quite a deal of pain. He's a big kid, big strong kid, and he uh, definitely is favoring his left leg there, Dom, as you can yep. see on the screen. Uh, the Kingsville trainer has made his way to the ice and... Uh, Niederbach's having a real hard time, Steve. They're going to take him right off the ice there at that end of the rink. Yeah, let's hope that is uh, something of the stinger nature and not beyond. That could be a devastating loss for the Kingsville Kings. Uh, their leading scorer, uh, quite an exciting hockey player to watch. Zekasi is having words with Hartwick. Now, I'm not sure. Hartwick is actually being escorted to the dressing room. I think he's out of the game, Steve. Yeah. And it's another five-minute penalty against Hartwick. This was his second one. He took one earlier that cost the team, and now he takes another one that's going to cost the team a power play. Hartwick needs to be gone tonight. Yeah, and they were both against Niederbach, Tom. Yes. Okay? Yep. Cross-checked him high in the face, as we understand it now, uh, late in the second period. Now we see Niederbach leaving the ice, favoring his left leg. I didn't see what happened, but obviously... It was a chop. There a was chop. a chop to the leg area, the ankle area, Steve. So puts Kingsville back on the power play. They're 12th of the game. Uh, they're 8 for 11 right now. And it's another five-minute penalty, though, Steve. Uh, again, not a good move by Hartwick. Because again, you know what? I know the game's done, but you still have to play a third period, and you got to try to win the period. you got to try to do some good things. That's not a good thing. Yeah, we have to negotiate our way through 20 minutes of hockey here, Dom, and I'm sure the viewers on Wii TV and those in the stands here at the Kingsville Arena, they want to see decent hockey for 20 more minutes. McDonough carries in from the point. A shot save as looks like we have a new goalie too, Steve, for Kamoka. I didn't see the change, but... Uh, I don't think that's wooden net. No, that would be the backup goalie, Noah, Noah Griffith. Griffith. Okay. okay, number one, obviously, uh, Josh Billow make. I was wondering, Dom, if it might we might see a new goalie. Yeah. Uh, and sure, uh, Josh Billow has pulled the trigger. Well, why not? You know what? The Wood played a good game. I don't care if he gave up eight goals. Griffith makes a save. There's a look, our first look at Noah Griffith, uh, who has replaced Wood uh, coming in tonight. Uh, as Steve mentioned, he's appeared in five games. Uh, he's one and four right now, uh, 5.79 goals against average, 0 0.863 save percentage. Well, you could say he's been thrown to the Wolves or thrown to the Kings, oh, yeah. so to speak, but you know what? Uh, you know, this, this man, as the backup goalie, he's got to come in and do his job now and, and just try to stop pucks. Havelka to Kotick. And Cheslock's on the ice, Steve. There you go. 
Glad to see that, that's for sure. He's up front with Nicholson. There's a shot, Chesson gets a stick on it, almost got a goal there. As the puck is sent around to Nicholson. Nicholson, wrist shot, blocker saved there by Griffith. Cheslock now takes over the puck in the corner. Cheslock back to the point to Kotick. Havelka fakes the shot. Kotick will take it. That goes high and over the net. Here's Havelka. Nicholson tried to hit Cheslock, and that puck goes right through to Kotick. To Cheslock. Cheslock shot. That goes high over the net. Havelka will pick up the loose puck. All Kings will hear as they work the power play. Right up front, Kotick saved Griffith as he read the play nicely. Came up with a good stop. Kotick keeps it in at the blue line. Circles, Kotick now looking for a little bit of time and space. Finds it, gets it over to Havelka. One-timer save, Griffith. Cheslock just shoveled it wide of the net. And Kamoka finally gets a stick on it and sends it down the length of the ice. But uh, a good uh, power play there for Kingsville. Uh, Griffith very solid in net to, to start his uh, play here tonight. And Kingsville now will rush back up ice, looking for more. Dara loses the puck as he goes towards the net and into the net. That'll cause a stoppage. And 16.46 to go here in the third period. 41 seconds remaining in the first Kamoka penalty. And then, or I should say the first, yeah, Kamoka penalty. Then of course, uh, there's two men sitting in the box with majors uh, that pretty much washed themselves out. So. Kamoka will not get that fifth power play that they were anticipating. And as we look at Devin Dara, who's flying after that slide into the net, that's good news. Everything's going in the net tonight for the Kingsville <laughs> Kings. Including the players. Zekasi, pass over to, I believe that was Sorrells, who hasn't seen a lot of ice time tonight. But he gets in on the scoring sheet. Well, we saw. Um, <laughs> Young Cheslock on the ice, now Sorrells. And uh, really, it's nice to see Coach Estalis using everybody. But Dom, at this point of the game, why not? Uh, everyone gets on the ice. At this point, everyone's going to play on the power play. And I don't know if I've ever seen a game, though, Steve. Sorry to cut you off here. Nine goals, nine power play goals. There hasn't been an even strength goal tonight. No, I haven't seen one either. And uh, certainly when I was coaching, I haven't, I haven't been behind the bench when there was a game like that. But you know, as they say about sports, and not just hockey, anything can happen in sports. Well, yeah. well, this is proving it tonight, that's for sure. So Kingsville will continue on the power play for what uh, about just 15 more seconds. Simmons carries over to the half wall, back to McDonough. McDonough. Corner. McDonough. Shot goes wide of the net. That'll go down the length of the ice. Mocha will get one player back. And now it's a four on four situation. Uh, 155 remaining in the Kingsville penalty. Now what are we getting? Looks like referee Provo behind the play, Dom. He's calling a penalty. Yep. I think he's calling too many men, actually, Steve. Baxter's heading over to the penalty box. So Kamoka is going to get that power play after all, Steve. Yeah, Andrew Baxter, a uh, new addition to the Kingsville team, an American player from Michigan, Dom. He's in his third game. Uh, perhaps he was the, the offending player making his way. With too many men on the ice. So it's a four on three situation. Kings, uh, Kamoka with the extra player, so they'll have a power play. They're zero for four right now with the extra man. You know what, Steve, I'm noticing there's a lot, a little bit of chirping and a little bit of stick work after the whistles here. I'm wondering where this is going to really go. Yeah, Kamoka. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh, Dominic, my me? goodness. That was just a blunt intent to injure right there. Number 79 from Kamoka, Bailey Strupat, just chopped right at the legs of the Kingsville defenseman. He didn't care about the pucker and he had no intention of playing that puck. That was just a blunt intent to, ch to injure. Dom, there's a term in hockey, maybe they use in other sports called pulling the shoot. And perhaps some of these Kamoka Dragon players are just doing that. They, they want to find themselves perhaps out of this game. 
taking steps wow. to make make sure they get out of this game. But that was totally uncalled for. Uh, wow. I've seen a lot of things in hockey, but to see a two-hander like that, open, blatant, not behind the play, as part of the play, you know, it's like he's chopping down trees. Steven Zekesi was the player that uh, received the chop. Sorrell's second goal of the season from Zekesi and Dara at 321, a power play tally. That was the last scoring play, making it 9 nothing. So Nicholson now having words with Provo asking, why is he not out of the game? Why is that not a five minute? And we have, they have a deuce posted on the board right now, so that's where it's gonna be at. This one might get ugly. Well, I mean, the score is ugly already, but uh, if, if you're a Mocha fan, I mean, if you're a Kingsville fan, you're happy, you got a belly full of gold, that's for sure. But I'm saying this one might get ugly. There's, there's some players really taking chops uh, at, at, uh, at each other. And I hope we don't see somebody get seriously injured here. Well, Dom, and we're perhaps going down the path of one of those games where it takes us half an hour to play 15 minutes. Yeah. Dara was just stopped. Kotick moving up. Uh, he couldn't get the shot off. Puck comes back out into the neutral zone. Hidalka, who's had a solid game here tonight, goes back for it. And the other thing to consider, Dom, Coach Estalos doesn't need injured players. Uh, nope. You know, after we get through the holidays, he's got a three uh, three road game. Well, he's got one tomorrow. One tomorrow, so. that's correct. What am I saying? And then uh, two after the holidays. There's a rocket top shelf of Velka. Oh, my. Makes it 10 nothing, And we're going to get a penalty as Kotick went over and chirped after the goal. That's not a good thing. Now Ross drops the gloves, and Dara doesn't want anything to do with Ross. Now Ross challenging the bench. This is a lot of frustration, I'm sure, Steve, coming out here. Yeah, sure is. Uh, Kingsville needs to keep their cool, Dom. They just need to yep. look at the score on the clock and uh, then look at the time on the clock and really just uh, create a plan to get out of this game uninjured uh, and uh, not suspended. You know, they need, like you said, they need to go down the road to Toronto, a four-hour bus ride tomorrow with a full group and uh, finish this holiday break with a win. So Ross has been escorted over to the penalty box. <laughs> They've added a deuce onto that other penalty now maybe it was a five minute uh, slashing penalty. That was the call, so again, you know what? I'd love to see what the penalty minute total tonight is for, <laughs> for Komoka. My oh my, it's gotta be at least half the game, Steve. Well, Dom, it's almost like the Kingsville Kings, uh, you know, uh, they're paying the price for being the better team here tonight. King, uh, you know, Kingsville sending a message, but at the same time, Komoka is sending a message. Uh, the message that Komoka is saying is, we don't like you, we don't appreciate uh, the score of this game, and uh, you know we're going to try to take you down with us. If I was the official, Steve, I'd go over to both benches right now, and I would warn both coaches that not only will they be thrown out of the game, there will be fines, there will be suspensions uh, on the write-up. Uh, I would say that uh, you know just to get control of this thing, let's get this game done and over with. The result is uh, not in question anymore. You see Al Provo talking to Coach Estolos there, you know. Well, and Gary's probably just saying, you know, look, at they're taking shots at our guys now. You know, I gotta keep my guys healthy. Bro. Sure. You know, it's uh, frustrating to watch as a, as a commentator, as an announcer, as a coach, Dom, to see a, a guy like uh, Matthew Ross, uh, you know, drop the glove and go after Kingsville gun. Now he finds himself in the box. You know, he was a representative of Kamoka at the showcase game uh, it, it, a few yeah. weeks ago. You know what, frustration's gotta, gotta be setting in. So right now we're gonna have a little three on three hockey. Let's see how this goes. It's like spring hockey or overtime in the NHL. Mm -hmm. I know you love that. Uh, no, no I'm, I'm still old school. I'm okay with the tie -off. <laughs> this is, I believe, it's Leach here. Oh, no, actually, it's Ocanon. Okay. To Havelka. Havelka, wrist shot, saved by Noah. Or Griffith scores on the rebound. That's our first even strength goal, Steve, of the night. It is, Doc. The 11th goal as Ocanon puts it up top off the rebound. 
Well, the Kingsville Kings, Dom, definitely had something to prove in this game. They know Kamoka <laughs> came in here beating them last time, and, and perhaps uh, Coach Estalos told me that Kamoka got their second goal to win the game with 17 seconds yeah. left in the yeah. game. So, you know, it wasn't a, uh, a, a dominating victory by Kamoka, so sorry. Uh, Sorry to Kamoka, but Kingsville Kings have certainly got the best of them tonight. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All Kings tonight, they lead it 11 nothing. Now. McDonough carries in, makes a move, doesn't get around bunch. That shot wide off of Maddie's stick. Horner takes a hit, but keeps the puck in. Enger can't get that loose puck. Maddie does. Done up. Long wrister saved by Griffith. Puck comes around. Maddie gets there at first, sends it to the point. McDonough can't control it. It goes into the neutral zone. Foxa gives chase. Foxa comes up with it, makes a nice move. Foxa looking for some uh, room now to get a shot off. He can't do so. Play goes deep into the corner. Here's Foxa at the point. So now. Kingsville goes back on the power play, four on three. You know, Dom Kamoka uh, last lost their last game to the Halton Ravens on uh, December 13th. It was a one-goal defeat. They lost three to two um, at Halton. This will be their second loss in a row to a team that has won 15 games this season. Mm -hmm. You know, they they actually came down the road and expected to to win here in this building tonight and have the first team to have not only beaten the Kingsville Kings once, but to beat them twice. Uh, the events just haven't lined up that way, and uh, we've seen it turn into a, frust a frustrating affair. Leach carries over the blue line. He's met there by Lebeck. He does a nice job taking him off the puck. Sorrells keeps it in at the point. Sorrells has a goal already here tonight. Zekasi back to Sorrells. His shot. Griffith makes a save. Scrum in front. Kamoka comes up with a loose puck. It's going to be Levesque. Nicholson, and Levesque circles four, to Lucas get a little Once bit of room. Again, As mentioned, the Kings are on their 14th power play of the game right now. They're 10 for 13. That shot goes high and wide. Comes back out into the neutral zone. This is the longest stretch we have had, Steve, in this period without a whistle. There's been a lot of them in this third period already. Well, the referees can certainly manage this game and uh, hopefully manage this game and draw it to a fast conclusion. Zekasi makes a nice move, avoiding the check from Zimmerman. Sorrells, his shot blocker saved by Griffith. And Zimmerman gets a stick on it, sends it down the length of the ice. Over the blue line. Zekasi's shot goes high over the net. Pavelka keeps it in. Pavelka's been all over the ice tonight. <coughs> Logs a lot of ice time. Cheslock comes in to try to dig it up. Cheslock now chases Foxa. He can't uh, make the pass connect. Simmons picks it up there for Kings. Will download a Cheslock. Cheslock circles behind the net, looks for somebody out front, and can't get the puck there. Coming back for the Dragons is Galili. He avoids a hit. Galili over the blue line. Trying to get around McDonough, can't do so. Simmons gets a backhander. That goes up over the glass and out of play. 11.55 to go here in the third period. Kingsville 11, Kamoka nothing. Tom, it was on November 28th that uh, Kingsville was handed a two to one loss in Kamoka. And since that game, in fact, this is the fifth game since that two to one loss um, where the Kings have scored, scored 10 or more goals against the opponent. Uh, that that loss, quite frankly, seems to have wakened Kingsville up in terms of the scoring category. Well, they, they've been on a tear since. Nine, five, 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 five. Maybe that was something they needed. You know, you get into that comfort zone and you, know, you, <laughs> you lose focus, believe it or not. You take things for granted. McDonough with a nice rush here. Just couldn't finish it off. Cheslock uh, getting some extra ice time Ooh. now. That's for sure. That puck shot into the Kamoka bench. This off will come inside the Dragons zone. And Dom, look at that. They're back to even strength. Look at that empty bench. Though. Yeah, well, there's been what two or three players ejected. A lot of bench there. A lot of a lot of guys finding themselves uh, out of the game, over in the penalty box. Hey. 
actually I stand corrected. Kingsville does is still on a power play here for 25 more seconds. I thought we I was wishing that we'd be at even <laughs> strength, Steve. That's what, that's what I was just hoping. Play some five on five hockey here for a bit. Zekasi with a nice rush, but uh, Griffith uh, paddled down nicely and uh, covered up and made a good save there to keep the puck out. Nine seconds remaining here in the power play. 10.59 to go here in period number three. Kingsville will win their 29th game of the season. This is their 30th contest of the year. Kamoka will suffer their 12th loss of the campaign. This is their 28th game of the season so far. Zekasi, shot blocked by Enger. Now we are back at even strength, Steve. Five on five hockey. Kingsville now 10 for 15 on the power play. 15 power plays, Steve. Wow. And three of them were five minute majors. Think about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And those power, those power play opportunities don't go away uh, when they reach at the five minute major par mark. Kingsville scored multiple goals on power plays and the minutes just kept mm -hmm. ticking down and ticking down. Yep. If you look at Griffiths there, you know, this young man comes in the game uh, with an eight goal deficit and just trying to do the best he can to get his team through 20 minutes. And he's given up two so far, but the Kingsville Kings, uh, they're bent on winning this game and sending uh, the Kamoka Dragons a message. Well, the message has been sent. Don't let us go on a power play. Zimmerman takes out Nicholson very aggressively. Nicholson, though, now comes up with a loose puck. Nicholson circles behind, takes a look, and sends it to Borner. Deflected that shot, slowly goes into Griffith, who makes the save. Now it's in the corner. Nicholson behind the net. Here's Borner at the point. McDonough, McDonough, shot blocked by number 10. That was Mapes. And we're going to get a high stick here. That was unintentional. Fans, don't forget, yeah, you can watch watch we've seen a lot of intentional stuff here tonight, Dom, but that one was, you're absolutely oh, right, unintentional. Dun, Although uh, referee uh, Impoliti is pointing someone towards the penalty box. This, as I mentioned, is our last telecast for 2015. Of course, we'll be back in the new year with the uh, Kingsville Kings, but uh, the Kings will take to the road for their next three games. There's the next contest tomorrow night. They'll be in Toronto. Then they get a little bit of a break. Uh, they continue on the road, though, when they come back January 8th at London. And then January 10th, they'll be in Toronto again. Our next telecast seems like a mile away, Steve. A long time before wow. we're back. But uh, Friday evening, January 15th, we'll see the Kamoka Dragons again here against Kingsville. And I'm hoping Mr. O'Brien and Mr. Watson will be in the lineup for Kamoka. I'd like to see full rosters and see how this really can go. I think it would be a much more competitive game. Uh, so the penalty has been posted, and actually, it's uh, going to be Kamoka going on the power play by the looks of it here, Steve. No, nope, they're going to play four on four, so uh, coincidentals. No, nope, now they're going to say King Kamoka's on the power play five on four. Okay, guys, let's do it. Sixth power play of the game. Tom, I admire Kamoka. your efforts to keep up. You do it well. Well, you know, I... I we I, get limited I'm a, I'm information. Observe, yeah. I'm observing, and, uh, you know, they got uh, four-on-four four hockey going. Then uh, they have to instruct Kamoka to bring another guy out. So I'm just going by what they're showing me on the ice here. Although, the, the you know, to the scoreboard uh, keeper's credit, they only had the one penalty posted. That's where I should have taken my lead, Steve. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it's all good. It's all good. We'll get through it. Well, Dom, you mentioned our next game. In fact, it will be against these Kamoka Dragons. Our next broadcast on Wii TV mm -hmm. will be against Kamoka. Mm -hmm. I, I can't wait till that one. I can't wait for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You know, again, I'm going to expect a much different game. Uh, again, we hope to see full rosters on both parts, and uh, hopefully they'll stick to a little more hockey. Yeah, it's nice to see five on five hockey that flows. Uh, both teams rolling lines, uh, referees staying out of it. Uh, th that's what the fans at home watching on Wii TV want, and certainly the fans here in Kingsville, that's what they want to see live. Box uh, moves, or actually that was Bunch moving it up. Uh, he doesn't get very far with it. Dare will take over for Kingsville. He'll send it into the neutral zone as Kamoka continues to work on a power play. It hasn't been very effective, not only this one, but throughout the evening. Uh, 
As mentioned, there's zero for five with the extra man. Levesque will take the loose puck. Into Strupat. And once again, Kings will send it down. Strupak, you may recall, uh, was the lumberjack down in the far corner. <laughs> Yes, I do remember that. He's obviously served this time, and uh, they're in a penalty here against Kingsville. It's going to be tripping. I believe it's going to be Maddie going to the box, and it looks like maybe Kotick's going to go as well. well referee Provost is uh, definitely giving uh, Kotick directions uh, to the box as well. Two at one stomp. So, chance for Kingsville to at least try to get on the scoreboard here as that's starting to look like a team picture in the uh, Kingsville penalty box. Eight seconds remaining in the first penalty and then the other one will be on delay here actually, Steve, for eight seconds. Uh, not going to make much of a difference. No. But Don, what can you say about Kingsville? They have uh, 10 goals tonight, 19 goals the other night. Some, def fans. some happy fans. Uh, yeah. Who doesn't want to support a team, Dom, that's going to score 29 goals in two games? <laughs> people like offense. People like to see goals scored. Uh, the NHL is constantly dickering with how we can get more offense well, in the I, game. I do, I do think the nets are going to be made bigger. I think that's where they're going to go with it. Quick shot. That save by Pacek. Uh, made it look pretty easy. A shot coming from uh, Levesque. So now it's a two-man advantage. For the Polka Dragons, power plays number seven and number eight for them. Levac, long shot, saved by Pacek, and a quick whistle. Luli having words with a couple of the Kingsville Kings. Looks like. Uh, And see, this is the stuff I'm talking about. This is where the referees have to go over to the benches and say, look, Z garbage stops now, guys. Let's finish this game off. Four no. 14 Zegasi, you see him. He's still chirping at the uh, Kamoka player for whatever reason. He obviously, he doesn't like the, he's taking exception to the way Luli there hit the puck at Jan Pesek. You know, they just need to zip it. and wait, Let's get on with this game. And, and There's nothing else to prove here tonight. No. Let's go home There's and uh, prepare for tomorrow's uh, journey to Toronto. Luli had a chance to get a shot there and couldn't finish it off. This is number 21, Enger. Enger looking for somebody loose. It's a five on three, guys. You can find somebody here. Bunch couldn't take the shot. And turning it up, Ice is Levesque over to Enger. Anger. Back to Mapes. He can't control it. And Dara now does a good job getting it out. Leads the rush. Dara finally taking off the puck. Here's a long stretch pass to Anger. He doesn't control it. Thought he was offside. Just played through the whistle, young man. And the referee in Pelini waved that off. Play through. Just over half a minute remaining on the first Kingsville penalty. Then it'll just be eight more seconds in the other one. Kings trying to preserve the shutout here. Enger to Zimmerman. Zimmerman leaves it there for Enger. Enger slowly moves it back out to the point. Emery shot. Scores! The Kings take advantage of a power play. Or I should say the Dragons take advantage of a power play. It's unfortunate for Jan Pasek. Uh, he was uh, six minutes from a shutout, Dom. And Mocha puts one by him, but nonetheless, you know, he still wins with a nine goal advantage. He still is going to win his, uh, what is he, 19th game of the year. He hasn't been really, really busy tonight, Steve. No, he has not. Uh, you know, in the first period, it looks like Kamoko was putting up a, a good game, a, a good fight. They were first effective. period, it was 2-0, believe it or not, folks, after yeah. the first. It was a pretty good period. Pretty good period. Kamoko and the two goals came off of four power plays. Right. You know, that should have sent the message there, guys. We've got to stay out of the box, and we keep ourselves five on five. They were okay. 
I, I think in some ways they've shot themselves in the foot here tonight, big time. Oh, clearly. You know what? Uh, you know, I think, Dom, that uh, Kamoka figured tonight we're going to be physical with the Kingsville Kings and send a message to them in their own building. I think it got out of hand. Back at even strength now with uh, just over five and a half minutes to go in this game. Kingsville up 11 to 1. Foxa. Bunch. Can't do anything with it. Kingsville takes over the box. Warner to Baxter. He's hit at the blue line. Warner follows up. Warner looks out front, has a man loose. That was Matt. He couldn't get the puck over to him. Foxa now leads the rush for the Dragons. This pass doesn't connect with Antone. And that'll slide slowly into Pacek. Face off to the blocker side of the Kingsville goaltender. Dragons can't keep it in. Levesque just chips it to the blue line. And regrouping Zimmerman sends it in. Warner gives chase. Under five to go in this contest. Simmons can't handle that pass. Emery takes over for Kamoka. Levesque. I'm guessing Ross was tossed out of the game, Steve, because they haven't seen him. back on the ice, and I don't see him on the bench. Like, mind you, he was in the penalty box. I don't know if that was just the coach, uh, Bolio, that made that move, or if he was actually tossed out of the game. That's not him in the box over there, or is it? I, I cannot tell at this point, Dom. It's it a might little be, you might be right. You might be right, that might be him. Though. I'm looking at over the rim of my glasses, but I, but I just can't see. Pretty hard to tell from our, our lo broadcast location. Well, we're seeing no penalty time. There's Was he assessed in misconduct as well? May maybe. Maybe that's it. You know, a 10 minute uh, deal here. Just over four to go in this one. And then it's off to Toronto for Kingsville. Leach, as Cheslock coming in on the left side, tries to get him the puck, doesn't connect. Leach carries on though. Spinning, being checked by Foxa. Now there's a scrum in the corner and the play is blown down. 340 to go here in the third. Yeah, Dom, I have to think that the Kamoka Dragons came in here tonight looking to get physical with the Kingsville Kings, going to send them a message early in the game, and it just got out of hand for them. Uh, you know, their message was to work, we can come and get all over you in your building, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna beat you to the puck and beat you physically. Strupat with the long shot. Pasha handles that easily. He'll hold on. Once again, we will be back here in mid-January. And actually, I think it's only four or five more home games after that. I think maybe four. Dom, I think you're right, four home games after that, one in January. and That's uh, our next game there, but uh, yeah, they're, they're, the season's starting to wind down when we come back, that's for sure. Well, as mentioned, this is the, uh, I believe, the 30th game of the season for Kingsville, and I believe it's a 42-game schedule, if I remember correctly. Yeah, they had a lot of games. They were very front-loaded, uh, September, October, November. Gee, Dom, it wasn't even until late November where they lost their first game. Yep. That puck goes down for icing. And again, we'll be back January 15th, though, against uh, the Kamoka Dragons. And your regular broadcast partner, Mark Knight, I'm sure we'll be back with you. Dom, I have to say I enjoy uh, calling the games with you. Your, your hockey knowledge is extensive. You've been doing this for a lot of years. and uh, have been doing it too long, Steve. But, but, yeah, but all that put aside, you that. just told me tonight that you've seen something here for the first time. Yeah, 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 the nine power play goals. Nine, you know, start to lead here. Ten, actually. Only one even strength goal here tonight. Uh, even Kamoka's goal was on a power play. So what <laughs> So That's 12 true. goals and 11 of them have been on power play. Things winding down here, obviously. This is Fox, a long stretch pass to Anger. He's hit there by Havelka. 
Kodak comes in to help him out. Kept in by Antone. Antone trying to get to the net. His shot, weak one, goes wide. Yara takes over for Kingsville. He loses it momentarily. Now he does lose it to Anger. He can't get anywhere. Oktavec can't uh, move the puck up. A little shoddy right now, Steve, as the teams have uh, settled down and uh, they just want to play it out, it looks like. Yeah, Dom, in a couple minutes, we'll have our Wii TV three stars sure. of the game. Uh, you might think, how is it possible to find three stars of the game in an 11-1 shellacking? But we, we will do that we'll as do the it. game ends. We'll do it. You're the man. <laughs> Oktavec over the blue line. He'll let a shot go. And that goes wide of the net as Oktavec takes a pretty good hit. This is Levesque. He'll pull up and lose it to Cheslock. Cheslock can't connect with his man, Oktavec. He'll give chase now, though, as... That puck goes into the corner. Emery over here to Strupat. Strupat chips it in. He can't uh, get any further. Simmons takes over now. Just over a minute to go in this one. Play goes deep into the Kingsville zone. Sorrells will take over. The left side pass off the glass. Ends up in the neutral Master zone. Play. Emery Master to Foxa. We are now in the final minute of the play. Simmons. Pouncing on a loose puck, backhand, and a good save there by Griffith. Griffith has made some good saves in this period, Steve. Both <laughs> goaltenders have been the best player for Kamoka. For sure. Uh, uh, Dom, we, uh, we have no idea exactly where the shots on goal on, how many shots Kingville have fired at uh, Kamoka goalies, but uh, they've had to work hard tonight. Uh, no, I, I think they've been the best players. They've made some good saves. Uh, Griffith came in here in the third period. And, you know, he's led a couple in, but just the same. He's made some good saves as well. They get, faces a lot of high quality shots. Just to recap quickly, we've got 28 seconds left. We'll get the scoring summary out of the play here in the third period. Sorrells is second from Zikezi at Indera at 321. It was Havelka is eighth from Kodak at 439. So Kanix is seventh from Nicholson and Havelka at 501. And it was Emery for Kamoka at 1352 breaking the shutout bid. Fox also got an assist on that. That's the scoring summary for the third period. Get that out of the way. And uh, as mentioned, Steve will bring you his Wii TV three stars of the game immediately following the final buzzer here in about 10 seconds. We'll recap the game a little bit and uh, send you off for the night. Glad you tuned in to Wii TV. We appreciate the uh, support and certainly enjoy bringing you all the action here from uh, Kingsville. That's it. The final buzzer has gone. The celebration begins for Kingsville as they win their 29th game of the season. And a very convi convincing victory. Yeah, what can you say, Dom? The uh, Kingsville Kings avenge their only loss of this <laughs> the season in a convincing way uh, tonight at the Kingsville Arena. And really, uh, what can you say? Kamoka Dragons had nothing in the tank all game long. They tried to get physical. That failed. Uh, providing Kingsville with multiple, multiple power play goals, which just buried the Kamoka Dragons early. Dominic, uh, three, the Wii TV three stars of the game. Uh, we'd like to congratulate uh, Marcel Kotek. In fact, he was our player to watch from uh, Prague, Czechoslovakia, as our third star of the game. Big, solid defenseman for the Kingsville Kings. With our second star of the game, again from Prague, Czechoslovakia, number four defenseman Lucas Avelka. I believe you thought he played a tremendous game tonight. Just logged a ton of ice time. Him and Kotick both uh, played a you know, huge role in tonight's game. And, uh, just, you know, they didn't have the point totals the other guys had, but certainly they were in on everything. And just, again, the, uh, the amount of ice time he logged tonight. And we'd like to congratulate Dom Bronco Octavic. He had his 10th and 11th goals of the season tonight. Two goals tonight is our first star of the game, Bronco Octavic. So those are the Wii TV three stars of the game. There's our final score. The Kingsville Kings win it 11 to 1 over the Kamoka Dragons. 29-1-0-0 uh, zero zero are the Kings. 15-12-0-1. The Dragons fall to that mark. Again, a reminder, our next telecast will be... Oh, just a little less than a month from now. <laughs> January 15th. January no. 15th, as crazy as that sounds. But, uh, yeah, that's the next time we'll be back here after the uh, holiday break. Uh, we'll be back uh, for a Friday night tilt with this same Kamoka Dragons team. I'm sure they'll look much different on that night. But, uh, 
there's a, the uh, game coming up at 8 o'clock on the 15th. But, Dom, can I just say, too, over the holidays, there's plenty of good video on demand for all yep. our WeTV fans and viewers. Anytime you want to watch something, it's there and available yep. to you and their yep. video demand at we-tv.ca. So that's it. That's the story here from the uh, Kingsville Arena Complex. The Kingsville Kings win it 11-1. to Again, Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. Be safe. Enjoy it. And we'll see you in the new year. Until then, this is Dominic Papa on behalf of Steve Pronger and the entire Wii TV crew wishing you a great night. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you all again very soon. I'm Mark Knight. I'm Steve Pronger. Catch all the Kingsville Kings hockey action live from the Kingsville Arena on Wii TV. That's right, Steve. Fridays and Sundays are fit for a king. The Kingsville Kings, exclusively on Wii TV. For Kingsville Kings hockey, we got you covered.